many birds were flying in the bright sky. It was over the Ares Empire. The statue of a bearded man on a horse was located in the center of the city, where many people were wandering. Two guards with spears in their hands walked among the crowded streets and wondered if it was too quiet here. The mustachioed guard asked again calmly. Nobody knows when the revolutionaries will take action again. They are ordinary village bumpkins. What a revolution. What a horror. His partner laughed and agreed that it was indeed true. Things have been pretty quiet lately. Maybe they realized that their little uprising was pointless. The man replied he was right. Probably the Imperial Knights dealt with them. He hopes that everything will remain this way in the future. After some time, a loud sound was heard from a splitting fire torch. A man in armor who stood opposite his subordinates near the table with a map in his hands said, Tonight they will kill the emperor and destroy the empire. Only in this way is it possible to restore the kingdom. He clenched his hand into a fist and looked at his men, who were reacting to his words with a frown. The blonde guy waved his head, and the head of the coalition turned to the red-haired guy and said that he had the most important task, Logan McLean. He must protect the secret manuscript at all costs. He pursed his lips, after which he answered with confidence that he knew it. When he left the room, his partner caught up with him and said with ridicule that he was still a patriot. He turned around and asked why he thought so. The guy clarified that he was talking about a secret manuscript. Many people sacrificed themselves to obtain and protect it from the Empire. Since the manuscript is under his responsibility, this means that the army of the Empire will first target him. He will be obliged to take risks to fulfill his duty. Logan turned to look at him sharply and answered, He speaks as if he voluntarily agreed to this. The guy continued to explain that he understood that the point was his fluency in the ancient language, but he didn't even complain, and this is an indicator of patriotism. Logan said that this was enough. With his words, he indirectly insults their other comrades. It's not about patriotism at all, it's about revenge. He was a worthless person. One day he fell from his opponent's weapon, and those around him whispered, It's simply incredible, young Mr. Dios Logan lost to his younger brother Ronian. But he only picked up a sword three years ago, right? Ronian looked at him in fear and said his name as he stood over him with a sword. Everyone whispered that he was a genius, but young Mr. Logan has been training to become a knight for ten years. This fool is the eldest son. The future of the McLean family is quite bleak. The angry man slammed his hand on the table and screamed, paralyzing poison. Did he poison his own brother? Has he gone completely crazy, Logan? Logan stood in his office with his gaze downcast, and the king continued to say, if Ronian does not recover from this then. But he could not finish this phrase. He clenched his teeth from the piercing horror that he experienced and shouted to him to leave here. Logan looked at him in fear. He was going crazy with feelings of inferiority and had hurt his brother. The king turned and said that he was no longer his son. For this sin, he was expelled from his family. That's who he was. Leaving home, he became a mercenary. Only after ten years of hard work did it dawn on him what a terrible person he had been before. But then it was too late. He stood in front of a fiery burning castle. One of the girls asked the other if she had heard about the news. Logan walked past them in a raincoat and heard everything she said. She suggested that it looks like there will be a public hanging in the square today. The prisoner's name is Logan. He stopped abruptly and heard the name Ronian McLean. They say he is an Aura user who fought against the Empire on the front lines. The members of the royal family fled in all directions, right? Everyone disowned him. He was worried about his brother and understood that he had to tell him something and therefore asked him to please move on with his life. He fled in an unknown direction with experienced horror. Someone shouted very loudly for everyone to look at this. This is the end that met the fool who dared to rebel against the Empire. The Ronian's head was cut off, and the surrounding people shouted cheers. Logan promised to take revenge, to take revenge on the Empire for killing his family, and for taking away his chance to ask for forgiveness. After some time, the guards shouted to run after him. It's him. This red guy has a secret manuscript. McLean grabbed the manuscript and ran in another direction with incredible speed, trying to escape from the guards, when he suddenly stopped in front of an unknown door, finding himself at a dead end. The guards caught up with him and shouted that he was here. He held his sword in his hands and said that he was dissatisfied with what was happening. The guard who caught up with him shouted at him to die, calling him a rebel. Logan began to defend himself and fight with the guard, when suddenly the end of the enemy's sword was put to his forehead, and he groaned. After a moment, he threw the guard aside with incredible force, and he shouted at him that he was worthless and began to cough loudly. 
Blood was shed, and the second guard who entered the room shouted at him that he was a terrible person. When he swung his sword towards Logan, he ducked and struck another guard in the stomach, thinking that he had killed another one. When the third one came running and found himself behind him, a moment later he was also destroyed by a sword attack. He understood that he needed to kill more Imperial degenerates. Fury appeared in his eyes, he stopped abruptly, and was surrounded by many other guards who shouted that he was here, and they needed to surround him. How dare he steal the Empire's treasure? He should give in and give up the manuscript. He looked around him and wondered if he was destined to die here. After that, a smile appeared on his face, and he said out loud, Then there is simply no choice. He threw the sword on the floor, and in his hand a magical ball of a blue hue appeared, which, when squeezed, turned pink and began to emit a magical glow. He invited the guards to die together, frightening them with his terrifying appearance. The people around did not expect such a turn of events and shouted, What? A bright light came from the window of this room onto the street and illuminated the entire area of the kingdom in such a way that even small fragments ended up in the forest, which was located at a fairly distant distance. His life was filled with regrets, and he existed for the sake of revenge. At least it's good that he managed to warm up the Imperial Degenerates, but he will not be able to get rid of his biggest regret even after death. He should have asked for forgiveness. Fortunately, if he manages to meet his family in the afterlife, he will be able to apologize to everyone. After some time, he found himself with a bandaged head in an unknown room and clutched the cloth in his hands, groaning loudly. After that, he scratched the back of his head and cried out in pain, due to the fact that his head was pounding from the terrifying sensation. He looked ahead and wondered what was going on. How is this possible if he died? A subordinate approached him and asked, Young master, is he okay? He woke up and looked at his subordinate with his mouth open, asking, Is this Rick? He answered, That's right, he is his main servant. How is he feeling? Logan couldn't understand what was happening because Rick died 30 years ago, and he asked him why he was alive. Rick was horrified by the question asked and jumped up in fright, after which he screamed, It looks like his head was seriously injured. He began to run in an unknown direction and shout that he needed to call the maid's doctor and hurry to do it immediately. She answered, okay. Logan looked the other way through the window from her room and saw fighting knights, on whose shields certain drawings were depicted. These were the emblems of his house that ended up everywhere. Is he dreaming about this? At that moment, Ronian entered his room, addressed him as a brother, and asked if he was okay. Logan was stunned by what he heard and realized that this voice was Ronian. He entered his room and came closer, looking to the side with a sad look, after which he took his hand into a fist and Logan realized that he remembered this moment. They looked at each other in bewilderment and Logan realized that this happened after their first duel. He lost to his brother and when he came to visit him, Logan threw a pillow at him and shouted to get away from him with incredible rage, pointing his finger at him and shouting that he was just the offspring of his father's mistress. He looked at him with a feeling of grief. Despite all the insults, Ronian got used to following him everywhere, but after that day he stopped coming. Logan grabbed his head and groaned, and Ronian screamed his name in fear. Rick came to them and said that his master needed rest, so he asked Ronian to return to his place. He answered that everything was fine, and Rick looked at him in surprise and asked again, sir. Logan asked Ronian to come closer to him with a smile on his face. Ronian walked up to him with embarrassment and surprise, while Rick looked around questioningly and scratched his head in bewilderment. Ronian apologized to him and said that he should have been more careful. He replied that everything was fine and he shouldn't apologize, he didn't do anything wrong, it was he who should apologize, but at the last word his lips trembled and he completely trembled and grabbed his face, and Ronian looked at him in fear and asked Logan, but what's the matter? He really should get more rest, and such a kind guy's life was taken away. He fought on the front lines on the orders of the kingdom and died. He grabbed his shoulders with his hands and once again apologized to him, trembling greatly. Deep tears of grief appeared on his face and his face turned red. He continued to say that he was very guilty of him and sharply hugged his brother. Ronian was surprised by this turn of events and asked again, Logan, why is he crying? He continued to tremble and hug him, squeezing him tightly, which is why the same tears appeared in Logan's eyes and he pursed his lips in sadness. They continued to hug for some moments. After that, Ronian opened the doors and said that in this case he would visit him again. Logan smiled back at him and said okay, he should go and rest. He waved his hand after him and looked at him with a smile, after which he turned towards the window and thought, 
If this is not a dream, and he really returned to the past, then he needs to change everything. Suddenly Rick ran into the room and shouted, Young master. The maid was with him. She bowed and apologized to him. He looked at her questioningly and asked why. Rick began to justify her and said, Nothing. Maria interrupted his rest because he forgot to warn her. But in fact, it looks like she mixed up the rooms. They apologized to him again and Logan, clutching his face in shame, realized that indeed he had treated the servants poorly too. He turned away and replied that everything was fine, she had done nothing wrong, after which he asked Rick to bring him a pen and paper. He looked at him in surprise, opening his mouth and asked what he was going to do to Maria with pen and paper. She trembled and covered her mouth with her hands, and Logan screamed at him, God, let him just take her away and bring him what he asks for. After some time, he brought a stack of paper and a pen and left it on the table. Logan thanked him for this and said that he could go and let no one come to him. Rick was stunned by what he heard and asked again, did he just thank him? Is he sure that everything is fine with him? No headache? Logan got angry and shouted at him that he was saying that he was fine, he should get out of here. Rick grabbed his chest with his hand, and with a wide beaming smile on his face, he replied, Okay, master, let him rest. Logan endured until the last and took a deep breath, and when he left the room he whispered that he yelled at him, which means that he is healthy. Maria should get back to work. She muttered something in response to him, and after hearing what Logan heard, he grabbed his face and groaned with disappointment. He needs to be patient. These are all consequences of his own actions. He clenched his trembling fists and realized that now it was much more important to write down what would happen in the future. A war against the Empire in ten years, a disaster that will destroy not only his family, but the entire nation. His goal is to prevent them, but first the Vassal War, which will happen in a year, will begin suddenly and partially destroy his family, for which dark times will begin, and he needs to prevent this, and for this he must take a certain course of action. After these thoughts, he knocked on his father's room, who stood opposite the window and looked into the distance and said, Father, he is the first young master, and came to see him. He turned in his direction and asked again, Logan. As he walked down the corridor, all the maids avoided him and shouted, Oh my God! Some servants also tried to get around him out of embarrassment and kept away. One of the maids who was carrying a lot of bed linen was frightened at the sight of him and fell off her feet with a feeling of incredible embarrassment right in front of his feet. She could not raise her gaze and trembled with the thought that she did not know what to do now. But why did she manage to fall in front of the young master? This is the end. He gave her his hand and asked if she was hurt. She smiled, looking into his eyes, and thanked him for his kindness, after which he asked her with a terrifying look not to worry so much, and she exclaimed in fright. She again began to apologize to him, kneeling down and shouting that she was very guilty and was asking for mercy. He didn't understand what was wrong and asked why she suddenly changed her behavior. He scratched the back of his head and thought, the sudden change in his character seems strange to them, and it will take time for them to get used to it. He can only wait and show that he has become a different person. She couldn't have reacted like that because of his creepy smile. Or could she? After this, the servant turned to the owner and said that the first young master had come to meet him. Logan looked towards the doors and thought, Father. One day he told him that he was no longer his son. In his past life, he resented his father for many years after he drove him away and considered him a cold-blooded man who stopped holding out hope for his son. He also considered him a cruel father who heartlessly expelled his own child and did not even stop by to visit him after he lost consciousness due to injury in an official duel. How stupid he was to think of him like that before. Having to drive away your own son would break any parent's heart. He entered the office and greeted his father, saying that it was him, Logan. He turned sharply towards him and said, Logan. An incredible sadness appeared in Logan's eyes, and he thought, Father, he's really sorry. His whole body trembled, and he realized that he looked better than he expected. His father asked him why he came. He was the owner of a house in the barony of McLean named Patrick. Logan expected this, but he really keeps his distance. For him, twenty years have passed, and he saw his face every day. Logan replied that he came because he wanted to ask permission to do solitary training near the family cemetery. He asked him again, solitary training. What does it take to win a regional war? The answer is simple. It is necessary to improve all the forces of the territory, make the knights and guards more powerful, strengthen and create new weapons, and many other documents to accomplish all this. Money, he needs money. But in Ares, the Maclean's are known as a family of poor people. They were open to trade, and they do not have money, but there is one way to instantly gain it, 
thanks to an event that will happen in three months, he will be able to receive the amount of the annual family budget, but for this he needs to hone his fighting skills and gain the right to vote. His father asked him again, Does he want to run away because he lost to his younger brother? He answered, No at all. He realized how far behind he was, and, albeit late, he drew conclusions. Patrick responded as if his lack of perseverance was his only reason. In his opinion, he still hasn't come to his senses. Logan thought that this behavior was quite expected and that he simply wouldn't believe him. He replied that he understood that another problem was his behavior. Patrick replied that he was tired. He always does nothing but talk and he should get out of here. He suddenly began to scream. All this time, instead of admitting his shortcomings, he took his anger out on others and was also incredibly stupid and childish. This training for everything lasting will help him take control of himself, and he asks his father to give him his permission. Patrick was silent for a while when he suddenly said that this time his words did not sound like a far-fetched excuse. How long does he plan to train? He answered that about three months. Afterwards, he asked, in his opinion, is this enough to be equal to Ronian? He replied that his goal was not to defeat him. He set a short period to simply survive from this maximum. Patrick replied that he had indeed changed a little and that it was good. In that case, he allowed it. Logan smiled and thanked him for that. When he went to the exit door, his father called him by name. The login sharply turned back and his father said, It's already spring, but the ground is still too cold to sleep on. He should try not to freeze. He smiled and replied, Okay, father. A few days later, he found himself in the forest with a backpack and a sword. He put it on the ground and said, So he came, only immediate family members are allowed here, and therefore no one will disturb him. Moreover, there is plenty of space for solo training. Moreover, he cannot allow others to see his teaching methods yet. When he opened the backpack, he pulled out a book and realized that he had found this. These are the secrets of the Divine Sword. In a past life, he memorized and burned this manuscript so that it would not go to the Empire. Initially, the cover of the book was decorated with a golden falcon. The contents described the secrets passed on to the heroes of ancient times who defeated this dragon ruling the world. He encrypted it using the secret code of the independent army so that no one could read it, and he simply could not believe that he would have to rewrite everything again. If the book does not lie after he masters what is written in it, the masters of the aura of the Empire and even the Archmages will no longer be afraid of him. In his previous life, his advanced age and lack of talent prevented this, but now he has a chance. He clenched his hand into a fist with confidence in his abilities and created magical energy. The vital energy that changes the body is called strength, and this is the basis of the secrets of the Divine Sword. He has to concentrate this heart power and create a core. Standing in a majestic pose, he continued to emit an energy flow and thought that this was not an easy task for a person with average abilities and the previous one would have broken down at this stage, but as expected, after returning to the past, he had a feeling that his strength was working fully. Now three days and nights of hard work will be enough for him to suddenly open his mouth in shock and exclaim, What? Wait, has the colonel already been created? A bright light was visible near his face, which spread throughout the entire area and his heart began to pound loudly, and he thought while this extremely dense energy was brewing, which his body absorbed like the earth after a long drought. He again clenched his hand into a fist with a smile on his face, after which he grabbed his sword and thought, if the content of the secret manuscript is true, then he stepped on the ground with his foot, breaking it into small pieces a little, after which he turned to the side and sharply swung the sword with incredible power and said that it was simply amazing. His physique and feelings completely changed. They adjusted to not the need to master the sword. He has no idea why the power core was created so quickly, but at this rate, in three months, he will become significantly stronger. Great, then he will continue training. Against the background of a tree trunk glowing from the sun, Logan's exclamations could be heard from his sudden movements in training, evening came, and then night and his exclamations died down. The next morning, some time later, he woke up in the same place and got to his feet and said, Today is the last training day. Of the ten sword techniques recorded in secret manuscripts, the strike that overcomes space and time is a space-time cut. With a single star core, he can only reproduce the technique. He swung his sword again while his hands shone with a fiery light and, frowning, he realized that he would definitely succeed. Splitting Wave he hit the ground with these magical powers, and from his blow an incredible wave of light occurred that rumbled throughout the area. 
It was the wavy split, the bright light from which continued to spread everywhere, and after a moment only smoke remained. Logan caught his breath. Drops of sweat rolled off his face from fatigue, after which he sat down on the ground and looked up at the sky and laughed with a pleasant feeling. He watched the tree split into several pieces and continued to laugh loudly. This power exceeds all his expectations, and there is no way for a beginner to master such a technique. His hands were shaking, and he understood. Even if he had spent all his strength after the first blow, it was good to have an ace up his sleeve. He had achieved the goal of his training, and could soon report the results to his father. But before the visit, he needs to wash himself. After some time, he found himself near his father's office, and the guard asked him again, What did he say? Let him forgive, but the owner cannot see him. So he asks him to leave here, young master. He asked why this was so. Is he unwell? He replied that the law of the family says that even direct relatives cannot meet the owner without prior notification. Has he really forgotten about this? Rick, standing behind him, said that this law has been around for a couple of hundred years. Turning to him, he said, but three months ago he met him without any problems. The man replied, this only means that the guard did not do his job. It was quite strange because this didn't happen in a previous life. He heard someone whisper that this terrible virus was breaking on him. Logan wondered if the sound was coming from inside the house. It seems that the powers have made his hearing sharper. The guards in the window opposite were whispering, be that as it may, he is still the first master, and the other answered that he was a coward who ran away after losing to his younger brother. The knight understands that he may not even be able to utter a sound in response. That's right, if something goes wrong, he will sort it out. Logan, after hearing this, realized that his reputation had fallen to the very bottom while he was training, so low that even the knights of his family mocked him. The knight replied, Next time please let him come when he is given permission in advance. He exhaled and realized, of course, this was unpleasant. He planned to demonstrate how he had changed and gradually improve his reputation. But after these thoughts, he reached into his pocket and asked the knight to tell him his name. He looked at him in bewilderment and wondered what he was getting. He said that his name is Dominion. He closed his eyes and answered, It means Dominion. Is he preventing him from meeting his father, citing the law of the family, which has practically become obsolete? Surrounding guards? The guards looked at him and began to silently observe what was happening, after which Logan continued to talk, and he also humiliated him with his arrogant behavior. Rick turned to him with his hand outstretched, and Dominion wondered what was going on. Did he suddenly decide to use his authority? Logan pronounced his name and threw his gloves in his face, and shouted what an unfair insult he was. He was challenging him to a fight. Sir Dominion, they will duel. The guards stared and continued to observe the ongoing situation, shouting, What is he saying? Logan asked him with a grin why he was silent. Was he scared? Rick looked the other way with fear and said, Young master. Logan continued to look at him menacingly and asked again if he really had his tail between his legs in fear at the sight of the coward that gossip called him. He believes his best years are behind him. Dominion continued to stand with gloves on his face, after which he took it off and said, Okay. He squeezed the gloves in his hand with anger and screamed, gritting his teeth in rage, finding himself right in front of Logan's face. He accepts the fight. After some time, the action moved to a room where there were many weapons for fighting. Logan found himself in the arena opposite the same guard named Dominion. He clenched his hand into a fist and stood opposite, in full readiness for battle. The surrounding guards who saw what was happening began to wonder, will the young gentleman fight the knight? He will lose. This is not even discussed. Things will end badly. Everyone started whispering, did they see how Ronian beat him? They say he went into hiding for three months after that so as not to be seen by his brother. How long can this coward last? Someone bet 50 gold coins that he would not be able to stand for 10 minutes. Another asked again, 10 minutes. He bets 100 coins for 5 minutes. Logan frowned and thought about the fact that he could hear everything. Does no one believe in his victory? Dominion turned to him and said that he looked quite relaxed. He asked you to take care of yourself. After these words, he clenched his teeth in anger and Logan mentally wondered with a grin. He had the nerve to agree to fight with him, but he doesn't have the courage to say nasty things in front of other knights. What a cowardly man he is. The servants who were watching him stood on the sidelines in fear. Rick thought that in the end, the gentleman went to a duel with him. They're finished. Rick froze and simply stopped breathing from what he thought was the horror ahead. At that moment, Logan took a step towards his opponent, and they found themselves opposite each other at a distance of less than a meter, and the judge shouted, The official duel between Logan McLean and Sir Dominion begins. 
For safety reasons, the battle will be fought with wooden swords. Now, but before he could finish, Logan looked at him questioningly and furrowed his eyebrows, and the judge wondered, does he really need to continue? The young master is very stubborn, and he simply has no choice. They were already given wooden weapons, but knights mainly use force, so even with this, they are capable of killing a person. Whatever happens here is not his responsibility, but Sir Dominion, for the sake of all that is holy, let him be treated easier. He waved his hand and shouted for them to start. The opponents pulled out their wooden swords and pointed them at each other. The Dominion spread its legs wide and a moment later glowed a red hue. People around began to ask with a smile, is Sir Dominion going to use force against an ordinary person? Will he really give it his all? One of the servants who covered his mouth wondered if this was not a lie. If the young master comes under attack then, but before he could finish speaking, the judge allowed asked the Dominions to be gentler. Logan turned in their direction and sadly thought, this may frighten someone who doesn't know any better, but he is clumsy with power and it comes from him due to a lack of control. The Dominion tensed and a bright light emanated from his body and Logan told him that he could see that he was on edge. Did something upset him? He clenched his teeth even harder and thought, boy, did he say that his best years are behind him? After repeating these words, he clenched the sword in his hands even more out of anger. Time passes, young people rise in rank. The Dominion was the weakest in the Horde of Knights for forty years and planned to retire. He was just minding his own business waiting to retire, but he suggests that his best years are already behind him. Why does someone like him dare to talk about this? After he became more angry, he decided to attack Logan with incredible force. When the servants saw this, they began to shout to stop him because the young master would die from such a blow. The judge asked again, shouting loudly, he himself agreed to this, what can they do? The Dominion attacks him at the moment of the jump, he thought. He had already decided to retire anyway, and therefore ended him with a secret technique. Swinging, he tried to hit Logan, who stood peacefully and did not move, when he suddenly took a step and created a great triple murder by swiping his sword in front of the Dominion, who stopped from these actions and, from incredibly strong tension, exclaimed loudly, dropped his sword and fell to the ground above Logan, who withstood over him with lust. A flames came from his hands, and he asked a question. He calls himself a knight, but is this his maximum? The surrounding guards opened their mouths in shock, as did the Logan servants, who did not at all expect such an outcome of events. The Dominican could not get up from his seat, and those around him were surprised that this was truly incredible. Someone didn't have time to follow the progress of the struggle. Is the young master the first to use force? Logan turned to the judge, who ran up to him and loudly shouted, Yes! He said that he wanted to give the Dominion another chance. What can he say about this? He answered, of course. After that, he turned to the earth-prone Dominion and asked if he was okay. His hands were shaking and his face was blue, and he wondered what even happened. Is he really weaker than this guy? He took up his sword again and said in a trembling voice, No, this simply cannot be. Logan thought that he was now furious and putting too much pressure on himself. And he said, this could very well be the case. After that, he hit the Dominion one more time with a sword right in the chest, and a stream of blood flowed from the Dominion's nose, and he again began to fall to the ground, and having finally fallen, Logan looked at him with some disgust and thought, he even gave a second chance, but it's time for him to tighten up tail. Dominion, clutching his face, trembled, his face turned red, and the blood continued to flow. He turned to the master and said that he confessed. But before he could finish speaking, Logan hit him again with a wooden sword right in the face, and because of which he flew to the side and groaned in pain. Logan thought about it. He showed enough mercy to the vassal who tried to rebel against his master. Now it's time for him to get what he deserves. He uttered this phrase with a feeling of hatred and, grabbing his sword, struck several more blows on the back of his opponent, who had tears in his eyes and screamed loudly in pain and horror, and also asked to stop this nightmare. Those around who watched what was happening said that it was very cruel. Maybe they need to stop him. The guards also asked in shock, is this really their young master? How could he change so much in three months? And after all, he also not only awakened the power, but he was even able to completely remake the sword technique. It was as if he had been a swordsman for decades. Logan gripped his sword with a sense of confidence and stood over his destroyed opponents. The judge shouted with a terrifying feeling that he had won. Logan looked to the side, and the judge shouted his name, the name of the winner. After some time, he found himself in his father's room, who told him that it was impressive. It looks like he has awakened. What happened during training? 
Logan did not expect that he was watching them, and with a surprised look replied that he had gotten rid of self-interest and was ready to let go of the past. While working with his thinking, at some point he felt power begin to fill him, and it was incredible. In his past life, this is exactly how he felt everything. Only after refusing to take revenge on his family did he gain strength. He barely managed to awaken after 40 years. His father told him that understanding had come to him and he had really changed, but the first thing he did after gaining understanding was to attack the knight. Turning to him, he said this question menacingly and Logan replied that the knight deserved it. He heard the whole story from the guards, right? Patrick answered yes, and yet he would ask whether it was necessary to go that far. He answered, yes, there was. The father groaned, took a deep breath, and asked him again, is this really true? That man tried to deceive his master's son and expose him to ridicule. If he had not lied down, he would have undermined the discipline in their house. Hierarchy is the pillar that allows the entire structure to function. Once this is shaken, the balance will be completely disrupted, and besides, after ten years of living as a mercenary, he realized that when it comes to a group of armed people, self will must be sharply cut off at the root. Today's incident will serve as a lesson to the rest of the knights. The father replied, the Dominion definitely made a big mistake in his actions. He forgot his duties and tried to fool him, but he greatly overdid it. He should control himself. Logan wondered in surprise whether his father had really forgiven him so easily. He remained silent and Patrick asked him loudly, What is it? Does he want to be punished? Logan spread his hands and with a smile on his face replied that this was not so at all, after which Patrick said that he did not consider his action to be correct and he should not make such a mistake again. He shouldn't do anything like that without his permission. He still hasn't officially received his rank. Logan replied that he would remember this and Patrick spoke and he also had to learn something. Logan looked at him questioningly and his father continued to say, his fiance Rena will visit them soon. Logan was dumbfounded when he heard her name and, taking a deep breath and trembling, thought, finally she will come, his cash cow. She got out of the carriage after a while and found herself near their castle. The servants reported that Mistress Rena Wolves had arrived to them. She walked onto the carpet and continued to approach a certain room, while the surrounding servants looked at her with their mouths closed in embarrassment. She looked incredibly good, and one of the guards said that the young master was very lucky to have her. She greeted Lord McLean and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. She was wearing a long, impressive blonde dress, and her hair was incredibly full and a cool blonde color. She also wore a lot of jewelry that adorned her assets, and she asked with a smile on her face, was he doing well? Patrick grinned and said, she has become a real lady, young Mistress Rena. Logan, standing to the right of his father, remained silent, and his servant looked at Rin with stunned attention, and thought with delight that he had seen her as a child, and she had grown up to be an incredible beauty. But what was wrong with this guy who should be the happiest of all? Logan looked at her gloomily and did not show any good emotions. Rena asked to be allowed to read the letter that the Count entrusted to her. She began reading, his dear friend, Lord Patrick McLean. Half an hour later, when all the guards continued to look at her with pleasure, she said, So, so this is what they hoped for, due to unavoidable circumstances. He, Chiron Wolves, asks for a dissolution of the engagement. That's all. She handed the letter to the maid, and everyone fell silent for a moment. Logan, without experiencing any emotions, thought about the fact that he was beating around the bush, but in fact he meant that Chiron Wolves thought that Patrick would become an aura user, but he has been at the level of a high-ranking knight for 20 years, and to be honest, his son is even worse. Why should they lower the bar and unite with them? He invites them to separate. That's what he really wanted to say. Patrick wondered with incredible rage. By breaking off their engagement without a proper reason, is House Wolves trying to insult them? The surrounding guards fell silent and drops of sweat began to flow from their faces. Rena blushed and shouted, What is he saying, Lord? She guessed that he would regard it this way, and therefore asked him to allow her to personally deliver the message to settle any misunderstanding. Memories of how she lived with them for a whole year as a child still clings to her memory. The moments created with young Mr. Bros. Logan in this beautiful and serene place were treasured by her young mind. She has no desire to forget them, but she is connected to her family and therefore is obliged to follow all instructions. She thought it best to personally apologize to him and young Master Logan. The surrounding maids listened to her speech with tears in their eyes and said, God, her heart is as beautiful as her appearance. Logan's face darkened and he thought, this is just a curse, the queen asked. So what is the reason, Lady Rena? 
I'd love to hear about these inevitable circumstances. Tears appeared in her eyes and Logan began to think, Marion Kairos, his stepmother and biological mother Ronian. She has long considered him an enemy because of the issue of succession, and therefore, as it seemed to him, she would not interfere in this. But the honor of the family is a completely different matter. Ryan bowed and apologized again, because she couldn't tell them anything because she didn't know the reason. Marion asked again, she doesn't know the details regarding her marriage. Rena replied that she was destined to marry and become part of another family. Her father does not discuss important decisions with her. Marion answered, It turns out she came to talk about the termination of the engagement without giving a reason. She thinks this is how they need to perceive it. Ryan got a little angry and answered her, In return, the Wolves' house intends to pay three million gold coins as compensation. Suddenly came the voice of the McLean house finance manager, Dwayne Filsner, three, three million. Logan McLean at that moment thought with a satisfied grin, Great, now it will be very good if he can get this money. But his thoughts were interrupted by the angry voice of Patrick McLean, how dare they. The knights heard him and immediately whispered in fear, he is too strong. Rena Wolves was scared because suddenly a guy in armor with long hair and a ponytail appeared in front of her and asked her to stand behind him. Then he addressed all three on the balcony and announced, he, Rockfern, knight of the house Wolves, calls on the lord. He also asks him to calm down and continue the conversation. But Patrick smugly asks him if he is such a high-ranking knight. Impressive for his age. He further added ominously that it seemed to him that wounding the rising star of the House of Wolves would serve as a fair exchange for humiliating the dignity of the House of McLean. Rockfern listens intently, but then, closing his eyes, he swallows hard. Then he still manages to cope with the situation, and in a calm voice he again addresses Patrick McLean, the head of their house calls the Lord a man of honor. He also said that the Lord would not persecute a young girl and a junior knight. Rena behind him adds that they are not trying to buy honor with money. She asks to be accepted as a sign of a sincere attempt to maintain the friendship between their houses, despite the impending public criticism due to inevitable circumstances. Patrick with low teeth understands that if he continues to push, he will become a dishonest person. Is this what he was trying to achieve by sending two children here? Chiron Wolves. Further, he still announces that the guest remains a guest, even when bringing bad news. The McLean house will not oppress them. Rena Wolves, hearing this, breathes out a sigh of relief, and he continues, but they also will not accept the Wolves' offer. And for breaking the engagement, they will ask only one thing. The princess sent must politely apologize to his son. He will not accept any other compensation. The knights heard this and said with smiles on their faces what was to be expected from their lord. This is how aristocrats should be. But suddenly Logan's voice is heard, father. He raises his hand and notes that, as someone who is troubled by a broken engagement, he wants to ask for something. He asks his father to listen to him. At this moment he thinks they need money. Is the father going to let them just apologize? This is madness. Three million is the annual budget of their home. In addition, half of the amount comes from the family and his stepmother as assistance. As soon as they stop providing this, they will go bankrupt. What then? The father does not understand what he is doing. They are obliged to get these three million at any cost. Further, turning to Patrick, he announces that he would like to accept the offer of the wolf's house. When he hears this, he wonders what. Does he want to make him go back on his own words? Logan McLean frowns and sighs heavily, gritting his teeth. Further, pressing his left hand to his chest, from which a glow appears, he understands that this is a lot of pressure. Although without an aura, this guy is a high-ranking knight. It's a pity that compared to others, this is a trifle. If he couldn't get everything sorted out now, he'd never move forward. Patrick McLean, turning completely to him, tries to convince him that their house is not so poor that they should give up honor for money. Then Logan takes a deep breath again and exclaims loudly, No, just like that. Patrick still can't believe what he heard, and so he screams, What? Logan, plucking up his courage, announces that right now they owe the bank three million. The annual interest is 150,000, right? Without Chiron's support, they will become bankrupt and a great house of the poor. They will end. Patrick McLean and Margin Quiros, listening to him, are horrified. Logan, vividly imagining this whole scene in his head, notes with pleasure that he would like to say so. But since this is an official meeting, he will have to restrain himself. Therefore, he answers more softly that the reason why they should accept these three million is precisely an honor. 
Patrick, having heard this, still clarifies with disbelief, so for this reason his son wants him to renounce his own words. Logan McLean confirms this, he is sorry, but the wolves' house is superior to theirs, and the Earl also rules the East. And although his forces are located there, they do not serve him. Whispers begin again among the knights and servants, but he continues, he is afraid that a simple apology will lead to the spread of rumors that they are trying to please the wolves' family. Rena Wolves tries to convince him that her family is reasonable. They have great respect for the honor of the House of McLean. But Logan tells her the exact opposite. He didn't come to break the engagement, continuing to talk about reasonableness. The princess should not be made a laughing stock. In his past life, he believed that Rena was sincerely upset about the inevitable breakup, but before that happened, he remembers something. She, standing in a large and bright room with her back to him, thanked him for coming. Today they are breaking up, but she expects to create last memories with him. Logan McLean, with a sad look on his face, tries to somehow convince her and desperately says, Rena Wolves. He remembered that his life as a young lord had been ruined, and the decision to risk everything for the woman he loved by escaping seemed to him the best. Then he timidly suggested to her that maybe they should run away tonight, but he did not have time to finish speaking completely when she suddenly turned to him and took out a dagger from under the hem of her dress. Logan, seeing this, asked in confusion, What is this? But the very next moment Rena threw the weapon straight at him. He, although feeling bewildered, quickly reacted and, drawing his sword, repelled the attack. It seemed to her that this was not enough, and so she, tearing the sleeves of her dress, said mockingly, Logan thinks that someone like him can be with her. He should already understand where his place is and get away. He lost to the boy. Why does he even need a sword? He made her task easier, and she is grateful to him for that. He tried to reason with her and did not bother asking questions. What was she talking about? But Rena Wolves suddenly screamed loudly, and the next moment Rockfern ran into the room shouting Princess. She began to lie without any shame. Logan suddenly became aggressive. When he heard her lie, he realized that she had caught him. He was guilty of many misdeeds, and his family no longer trusted him. As a result, the McLeans had to apologize to the Wolves and pay huge compensation. Now, smiling creepily, he mentally turns to Rena Wolves because of a crazy person like her. He could no longer trust women. He is sure that this time she planned to profit and run away, having achieved a break in the engagement. What a pity that now nothing will work out for her. At first, Logan planned to change his reputation within the family. It seemed to him that if he slowly showed his new sides, it would convince people about him, and one day his family would also reconsider their attitude towards him. Those were his thoughts, but the fight with the Dominion made him realize that the guards were turning a blind eye to the fact that he was clearly being disrespected. And during his absence, many rumors began to spread. He seriously wonders whether it is possible to influence his own family by gaining recognition from such people. There are nine months left before the regional war. His reputation is not important now. Grabbing the balcony railing tighter, Logan McLean realizes he must save his own family. He then turns to Rena and announces that he accepts their offer of compensation, despite the family's wishes. She is surprised when she hears this, and Patrick McLean next to him screams furiously, Logan, how dare he defy his will? But he replies that empty apologies do not suit him. Patrick asks, confused, what? He explains that if their honor is worth just a few words that disappear into thin air, then the value of it is completely weightless. Rena Wolves feels irritated when she listens to him and still says that they, the Wolves, obey the will of the Lord, the owner of the house of McLean. What is his final decision? Afterwards, she looks at Logan from under her brows, but he frowns and notes that she is saying this to save her father's reputation. She is probably bursting inside with the thought that they will have to pay three million. Finally, Patrick McLean announces his decision. As a representative of the House of McLean, a sincere apology is not enough for him. However, the final decision is Logan's. Marion, listening to him, exclaims in confusion, Dear, hasty discussions about what just happened begin again among the servants and knights, and Rena Wolves, looking up angrily, clenches her teeth. Logan McLean is attracted by Patrick's voice, which warns him, but he must be careful if he sells his honor, then in the future he will be more willing to agree to such an exchange. This is followed by his stern but wise look. Logan, after listening to him, mentally apologizes he is sorry, but he cannot give in. Therefore, further he also makes his speech, as a person who suffered from a broken engagement, 
he will accept money from the wolves' house as compensation. Margin Cairo's chuckles contentedly, and Rena feels hatred filling her, but she can't do anything about it. Patrick McLean, taking a step back and walking away, notes out loud that he thought his son had changed a little, but it turned out that it was for the worse. He is to blame for not explaining to him the true value of honor. Logan, looking down at the floor and not answering anything, still mentally explains that the father must understand that he is doing this for the good of their family. A flag flutters above the castle tower, which is clearly visible in sunny weather. Logan McLean, looking at the brightly sparkling gold coins, realizes that they finally belong to him. As much as three million gold coins, calmness. He shouldn't get too excited. First, he will put them in the bank. Suddenly, there is a knock, and he wonders, is it Rick? Then he orders the guest to enter. When the door opens, heavy footsteps are heard on the floor, and the voice of a man is heard, clearing his throat and asking for forgiveness. Logan chuckles in surprise and says, Dwayne. He, placing his right hand to his chest, confirms, yes, that's right. Logan McLean remembers him as his father's financial manager and most trusted confidant. In other words, he came to him for a reason. What did he need? At that moment, he smiles and understands that he, Dwayne Filsner, is now faced with the greatest difficulty of his life. As the McLean's finance manager, he had to cut the budget for the entire castle. He remembers how the servants and knights desperately shouted to him, the servants are running out of supplies for the winter, but first they need to replace the weapon guard. Previously, Dwayne was forced to make up for the lack of money by begging his father-in-law for help. Listening to the complaints, he wondered whether he was a money manager or a leader of the poor. Can't be. If this weren't his hometown, he would have quit a long time ago. But now he has a chance to settle the situation for at least a couple of years. His opponent is a clueless child. From Dwayne Filsner's perspective, Logan looks like a complete fool. Therefore, grinning evilly, he mentally, but not sincerely apologizes to him, he is sorry, but he will have to share the money for the child. Finally, he laughs cheerfully and replies that he just came to say hello. Yesterday, the young lord surprised him very much. Logan McLean, not showing any interest in this phrase, asks again, what? Dwayne suddenly clenches his fists and continues to flatter. The young lord defended his own position, not paying any attention to the unreasonable pressure on him. He was literally shocked by what kind of air the McLeans were growing up. With these words, he gives him a thumbs up but at the same time mockingly thinks, how can this guy get such flattery? Before, he only did all sorts of nonsense, he was probably the first one to praise him. Well, he should open his own heart and wallet to him. But to his surprise, Logan tiredly says, what kind of nonsense is he talking about? Dwayne Filsner notes in shock, wait, he was not prepared for such a reaction. Therefore, once again I cough into my fist, he repeats more restrainedly, in their difficult times, Three million gold coins is like rain during a drought. The young lord's ingenuity will allow the family to breathe a sigh of relief. But Logan McLean, still not perceiving his speech, asks why this. The money belongs to him. Dwayne laughs when he hears this, but he feels as if lightning has flashed around him. He is mentally indignant. He expected such an outcome, but it was worth a try. What a little idiot he is. Is he going to spend everything on his own needs? Clenching his fists, Dwayne Filsner still tries to find his balance and thinks he needs to calm down. He must look back on his 20 years as the McLean's financial manager. He remembers how he fell to his knees and, resting his face on the floor, said prayerfully, he asks Viscount Kairos for help. The Viscount, frightened, shouts at him, he shouldn't be like that. But Dwayne, clutching his leg, desperately asks, must save them again. On the contrary, he tries to step back, asking what's wrong with them. He must let him go. Remembering this moment in detail, Dwayne Filsner understands that he is used to being humiliated, and now the situation is the same, but he has an idea. He covers his face with his hand and begins to wheeze. Logan seeing this wonders why he is crying. Afterwards he asks, is everything that bad? Dwayne removes his hand, showing that there are tears in his eyes and fussily answers. He doesn't know if the young lord knows this, but they owe Cooper Bank three million. The annual interest alone would be 150,000 gold coins. Did he know this? Logan McLean, looking at him silently for a couple of seconds, reminds him that now is harvest time. They will be able to pay the interest. Hearing this, he cannot understand how he knows so much. After laughing embarrassedly, Dwayne Filsner explains that, as a rule, running a barony requires money, and they are always tight with it. If only the young lord would help them a little. Logan shakes his head and changes. He's sorry but no. 
Duane, feeling shocked, asks questions. What? Why? He thought that the young lord had opposed his father for the good of the barony. Logan McLean confirms this, right? He, expecting a completely different answer, answers prematurely, clearly, he knew everything. But after a second, he stops and asks again, what? Right? Logan explains that he will use the money for the benefit of the family not to cover current expenses. He needs to think about the future. Dwayne Filsner, continuing to become more and more indignant, thinks with hatred as if the boy knows it. He just has to give him the money. But he is interested in, let's say he doesn't pay his debts, but how will this change the overall situation in the family? Dwayne is confused and tries to come up with the most appropriate answer. Their budget will increase, and managing the castle will become easier over the next couple of years. They will have the opportunity to exhale. Logan does not give up and demands further answers. And then what? Dwayne Filsner, not expecting this at all, asks again, What? He continues instead, they will go back into debt, right? They don't even have any special items for sale. It's a vicious circle he wants to break. The money will be used to implement his plan. Dwayne listens to him and wonders what. Is this really the bully he knows? He imagined him as a child who does not care about the problems of his family. But suddenly Logan seems to remember something and announces that he has a request. If he does him a favor, he can help cover some of the family expenses. With these words, he deliberately takes one of the coins in his hand and shows it from all sides. Dwayne Filsner, wary, asks what service. He smiles and explains that he needs him to gather some mercenaries. After a while, a leather bag falls to the floor. In appearance, it is definitely filled with something, and Rick's voice is heard nearby. Is the young lord really leaving? Logan McLean donning knight's armor confirms this, yes. He wonders in confusion, but what is happening to him? He returned from solo training not long ago. Logan thoughtfully but seriously replies that he has to earn money. Rick is perplexed and asks if the young lord doesn't have enough of them. He, taking the bag, replies that he needs much more. Then the servant Rick reminds he is sure that the lord will be against it. The atmosphere in the castle is too tense. But Logan McLean sighs and agrees, right? So he will leave secretly. When he hears this, he screams very sharply and loudly, What? From such a sound, Logan has to plug his ears with his fingers, and he also asks him to shut up. Then he decisively thinks that if he cannot influence his reputation now, then he will not be able to change everything else. He needs to organize an army outside. Fortunately, he knows what is happening there now, since it was at this time that he was kicked out of the house. First he needs to check on that person. Rick, watching his thoughtful face, wonders what he's thinking about right now. What other escape could there be at his age? Putting the bag on his shoulders, Logan McLean only answers tiredly, he is terribly persistent. Servant Rick does not give up, and stretched out on the floor announces what he should do if the young lord runs away. He will have to go through it. When he sees this, he sighs heavily and almost groans, this cannot be. Then Logan raises his leg right above Rick's face, and immediately shouts, no, do not do this. Logan McLean also sighs with relief and some pride and asks him not to worry. He left a letter for his father. No one will blame him. Rick, rising and sitting on the floor, still as if not realizing what had happened, clarifies what the young lord wrote. But Logan just smiles, and they stare at each other in silence for a few seconds. Soon, while Patrick McLean was sitting at his desk and holding a piece of paper in his hands, a red flame was blazing behind him. Clutching the letter tightly with two shaking and angry hands, he read what was written there. It was intended for his dear father. The breaking of the engagement broke his heart. He decided to go away for a while and will be back soon. Logan. Then only Patrick's furious scream is heard, which is heard throughout the castle, Logan, Rick, all this time standing right in front of him, almost crying, mentally prayed to him, the madman must come back. Even 200 years ago, the house of McLean was not in such a position as it is now. A huge and extensive plunder, stretching from the neighboring Viscondom of Thesron to the Viscontses of Sylvanus, Perenna, and the plains of Bifrons, was revered as the ruler and master of the southern part of the kingdom of Grandia. But the ineffectual reign of three generations before the present lord, Patrick McLean, resulted in his family's demotion in rank and greatly diminishing the territories they controlled. The vast grain estates that had once been called the McLean Plains were handed over to a powerful vassal, and the fertile lands were divided among various landowners. The place the McLeans ended up in was brutal, dry land near the southern mountains. Logan McLean, equipped with already dirty armor, confidently steps forward and at the same time reflects, 
there are no worthwhile regional products there, as well as copper mines characteristic of the mountainous area. In such conditions, even if they win the regional war, they will have to forever turn to the Kairos for help. It will take a lot of money to break the vicious circle. Much more than three million. Here, in the greatest trading city of the kingdom of Grandia Kale, there is someone who can give them to him. When he walks down the street, with stalls with goods lined up in a row, the merchants rush to lure him with loud cries, rings with precious stones from the empire, ten gold coins. This shield is popular in the north, a fresh southern fruit. But Logan, as if not hearing them at all, continues to think that the road to here reminded him of how far away the Maclean's were located. If he's not mistaken, this man spent his youth in Kyle. Residents say that Philip Cloud's golden beetle lives somewhere here. The Ares Empire is the strongest nation on the continent, a powerful centralized government that operates on a merit system. Regardless of gender or age, a person with talent can succeed here and enjoy power and wealth. Even foreigners have this right. An excellent example of this is Philip from the Kingdom of Grandia. He is one of the richest merchants influencing the empire and the greatest military merchant who is considered a traitor to the Kingdom of Grandia. However, in reality, despite his nickname of the Gold Beetle, he supports his fellow countrymen and uses money and power to make the Grandian a sovereign state. Logan McLean suddenly stops and looks ahead and makes a mental note, and this person is that guy over there? Ahead, he sees a sad guy with dark hair and glasses sitting on the ground. Tears run down his face as he shakes and plaintively says, How could the scoundrels deceive him like that? What does he have to live on now? This can't be. Then he grabs his head and sighs heavily. Logan, continuing to look at him, remembers that he heard that his business went bankrupt due to deception. Sad, however, the sight. When he comes closer, the guy desperately asks out loud, Maybe he should just die. To get his attention, Logan McLean has to cough a little and say he's sorry. Is he Philip Cloud? He timidly answers, yes, well who? Looking at Logan for a few seconds, Philip notices red hair and eyes, a strong-willed look. Logan McLean says smiling, it's good that he found him, do we have time to talk? But Philip, slowly moving back, wonders who he is. Do they know each other? In Logan's gaze, he immediately saw what he had encountered many times as a businessman. Greed. He begins to tremble even more violently again and thinks, judging by the time when this guy approached him and his old armor, this is probably a mercenary. Maybe that's what he thought it was. Logan McLean tries to tell him something, but Philip Cloud suddenly starts yelling that now is not the time to pay off the debt. He will receive the proceeds from the sale of commercial property in three days, then the mercenary should come. Logan, with a friendly expression on his face, tries to explain to him that he did not come to collect a debt. But Philip, completely unable to hear what he is talking about, repeats, he said that he has not yet received the proceeds. He must go. From the outside, this scene looked funny, while Logan McLean silently watched as Philip Cloud stomped his feet, terribly angry. When his strength runs out, he finally says he asks him to leave. Finally, Logan tries to explain everything again. Philip should stop and erase, meaning he should calm down. He didn't come for money, he wants to invest. Philip Cloud, hearing this, repeats in confusion, should he invest? Into it, Logan McLean boldly confirms, yes. Then he thinks, so this guy appeared not long ago. He's crazy. Yes, he is a madman for investing in someone who has completely failed. But clenching his fists, he wondered if it was true. Then Philip asked, frowning, how much he wanted to give him. Logan, also looking at him slyly, asks how much is needed. He thinks that he will have enough money to cover his debts and get back on track. Philip Cloud opens his mouth in surprise and wonders, is this true? Then his gaze softens and becomes like that of a child. Looking at Logan McLean, he already thinks differently. If you look closely, his armor is very dirty. Did he come from far away? But just at this moment, a large piece of dirt falls away from it, revealing the coat of arms. Then Philip purses his lips, but Logan, not noticing this, continues with a smile. And so, how much does he need? He will try to help. As soon as Philip Cloud hears these words, he begins to tremble again, and he says indignantly, he's a little bastard. Logan McLean, as if he had heard him poorly, asks again with a wide smile, what? Philip, looking up at him and pointing his finger, angrily says, if he wanted to deceive him, he should have prepared better. He is the same as the others. He is not an investor. This symbol of the southeastern barony of the McLeans, right? They are a poor family who asks their own doe for help. 
What other investment is there when its owner is unable to pay off his debts? If he is caught pretending to be a nobleman, he will lose his head. Then he turns away and sobs in a trembling voice, saying that the guy ran into the wrong guy. But the very next moment, turning to him again, Philip Cloud, with tears in his eyes, announces that he is completely bankrupt. Did the guy understand this? Logan only purses his lips in displeasure and mentally notes that even when he found himself at the very bottom, he did not lose his insight, as one would expect from a future tycoon. How can he calm him down? At this time, Philip is screaming bitterly, he doesn't even have money for food. But then suddenly an idea comes to Logan McLean, and he asks Philip Cloud for attention. Turning around, he still doesn't lose the feeling of anger and asks, what again? Is he trying to trick him again? But then Logan shows him a bright flame in his palm, and he, very surprised by everyone at this, asks strength. Doesn't he imagine it? Philip further wonders, did this guy awaken this at such a young age? And such a genius is trying to trick him. There is hardly an idiot who would decide to ruin his own bright future. He laughs embarrassedly and already smiling. He changes. He's sorry. So many troubles happened to him that he began to react sharply to everything. They can talk about what the young man should do to him. Logan McLean, finally hearing this, sighs and announces that he wants to hire him forever. And with a bonus, he will pay off his debt. Philip Cloud asks in disbelief, should we hire him? Forever? He's sorry, but the McLean house doesn't have that kind of money. Then Logan defiantly throws his backpack off his shoulders onto the floor and slowly opening it, indifferently asks how much he owes. Philip, a little confused, replies that about 250000 He boldly replies that he will give the entire amount and will pay the same amount for it. Although no, it will add 50000 on top. In the next moment, Philip Cloud has to squint his eyes. And at the same time he wonders, is this the light? Logan, finally opening his backpack, filled to the brim with gold coins, wonders if 300,000 will suit him. A total of 550,000 gold coins. He will pay everything at once. Philip even blushes with confusion, and in his eyes, Logan McLean acquires wings. Then he wonders, is this man an angel? Soon a drop of blood from a finger drips onto the corner of a sheet with voluminous text, and Philip Cloud hands it to Logan. A witch in a pointed hat with white hair clapping her hands announces, Great. Contract signed. Now, if a subordinate, represented by Philip, tries to deliberately harm the owner, he will feel monstrous pain, as if his soul is being torn apart. If he is not satisfied with this, then he must awaken the power and become at least a high-ranking knight, or pay a can of the fourth circle and above to lift the curse. Philip Cloud listens to this and gets a little nervous. When they leave the magic shop together, the girl kindly shouts after them to come again. He tightly grabbed the straps of the backpack, which now hangs on his back, and wonders with horror, did he sign up for the sentence? Afterwards, looking at Logan McLean, he remembered with horror, Angel. No, really, it was just a fever. This guy drew up an expensive magical contract to make him his own slave. But for the cost of this one could buy 30 slaves. Suddenly, Logan interrupts their silence and, smiling brightly, as if I could hear all his thoughts, says, they met for the first time, so they can't trust each other, right? Once he invests, he needs a guarantee. When they get to know each other better, she will break this contract. They should work hard. With these words, he extends his hand to Philip, but Philip Cloud, pursing his lips, notes that this is some kind of nonsense. He didn't say any terms or condition, but he has no choice but to believe this man. Therefore, having shaken his hand in response, he immediately asks, but at the same time shows that he is dissatisfied, what will he have to do? Logan McLean announces that he must first buy monster meat. Then Philip wonders, monster meat. He abruptly snatches his hand away and shakes hands, mockingly saying, wow, he's really crazy. Logan then notes that he said out loud what he was thinking. Then, sighing, he also thinks, well, such confusion is quite understandable. The blood and meat of the monster contains poison, so I light it. But in a couple of years, the situation will change dramatically when it becomes known that it is possible to neutralize the poison with ordinary ingredients. In some areas with a shortage of provisions, people will begin to eat the meat of monsters, and already in winter, the number of people cured of incapacity will increase among them. Consuming monster meat will result in Kellogg. In his memories, a woman appears who, looking at the light emanating from the man, covering her mouth with her hands, exclaims, This cannot be. Even those who became infertile after being wounded will see the effect. One year after the Imperial Magic Tower confirms this, Kalok will disappear from shelves across the continent.
The guy magician showing a thumbs up announces that checking the authenticity of the Imperial Magic Tower is the best medicine. Logan finally sums up his thoughts, and all because this remedy will have a good effect on male strength. So he can make many times more money out of three million. Philip has been watching him wearily for a while and soon wonders if he should run away. Soon the extremely surprised voice of Philip Crowd is heard. A million. Has he gone crazy? Who would buy a million for monster meat? All the visitors and waiters in the small tavern immediately turned towards him with curiosity. Logan McLean immediately asked him to tone it down. They will earn even if he buys even more. Philip, still not wanting to believe it, clarifies that he is against it, but Logan is confident in his own decision, right? He answers without hesitation, yes. Then Philip Cloud wonders what he thinks the price range is for Kalak meat. He says that now it is worth nothing. Everyone just burns it because there is no buyer. Therefore, if they simply order corpses from someone, it will cost 200 gold coins, taking into account the kingdom's transport fees. If they bring a lot of Kalaks at a time, it will be even cheaper due to transportation. Philip, after listening to him, notes that it is expensive. But he even took into account the transport tax. Logan frowns and clarifies, is this a mistake? But he also thoughtfully explains, no, he's probably determined the price, but with a budget of a million, he plans to hire a guild for the hunt and then buy back the catch. Logan McLean, picking up a wooden mug and holding up this cardboard, still doesn't understand what he's leading to, confirms this, yes, what's wrong? Philip Cloud, tapping his index finger on the table, insists that this is completely the wrong approach. Nowadays, everyone throws away monster meat, right? Therefore, it will be enough to redeem it. There are plenty of mercenaries who are ready to bring and sell anything for a coin. And if they see someone else trying to get rid of the meat, they will simply buy it for them. He is sure that if he just asks, they will bring all the meat in the kingdom to his feet. And also cut up meat. After listening to him, Logan realizes with horror that he has already repaid all the costs for him. This is an amazing guy. Suddenly Philip, looking at the mug with embarrassment, asks, from now on, he wants Logan to entrust him with money planning. So now his fate depends on him. Hearing this, he chuckles contentedly, and then abruptly remembers, by the way. Philip Cloud immediately excitedly asks what it is. Logan McLean hands him a piece of paper and explains that he should stay in Kale for now and buy this in large quantities. He takes it in his hands and reads it out loud. Cartridges made from ironwood growing in the southern mountains of the Empire, springs and glue. Does he want to sell toys? Logan, with a sly smile on his face, mysteriously replies that it will be something better. At the same moment, he mentally notes that for now he cannot tell him that all this is raw material for weapons of war. In a past life, weapons made from these materials were used to invade the Kingdom of Grandia, and even pitiful soldiers with the help of this were able to keep the knight under control. He entrusted Duane with recruiting mercenaries to whom he would give these weapons so that they would gain an advantage in the regional war. But first he needs to find a craftsman who will make it, and a designer who will teach them how to handle it. Two days later in the city of mercenaries Haron and a rank mercenary Kaiselin, leaning against the wall of the building asks again, does he want to hire him as an instructor? He's sorry, but he's never done anything like this before. Logan McLean, standing opposite him, tries to convince him that it won't be difficult. He simply has to train the mercenaries of the rank he hired. Kaiselin, scratching the back of his head in thought, explains that he doesn't know what they told him, but he only supervised a couple of children. A young person should better turn to professional teachers. Logan, looking him straight in the eyes with a kind grin, wonders if there could be any rumors here. He worked with him in a past life, so he knows everything personally. Kaiselin can master any weapon and has excellent horse riding skills. Moreover, its value will increase once you start working as an instructor. After all, the mercenary squad he raised after he was seriously wounded, and his skill after retirement, cannot be compared with anything. But right now he doesn't seem to be in the best of spirits. It's worth offering him money. So afterwards he boldly announces that he will pay 4,000 gold coins for it. When Kaiselin hears such an amount, he freezes in place and purses his lips and thinks, a rank of mercenary can earn 2,000 for a maximum of a month of work, and this guy offers him twice as much so that he can't fall for it. Stretching his hand, palm forward, and shaking his head, he repeats that he has never worked as an instructor. Then Logan asks again, is this not enough? Then 6,000. Kaiselin, starting to get nervous and breathe heavily, tries to come up with the most plausible refusal. 
he prefers a task where he needs to fight. Logan McLean, not intending to give up, crosses his arms and closes his eyes and says, Really? It looks like he has no choice. 7,000. When he hears such a number, his ears involuntarily twitch, and he hits the stone wall with all his might and screams, the guy can't hear him. He reads that money can buy anything. But Logan perceives these words differently and briefly says, 8,000. Kaysolan immediately changes his mood and happily smiles and exclaims, they have the same views. He thanks his employer in advance. When Logan McLean watches him bow, he mentally rejoices, Kaysolan is hired. Soon, when they were slowly walking through the streets of the city, after listening to the whole long story, he summed it up like this. This means his employer is the first and young lord of the house of Baron McLean. But Logan clarifies, isn't he curious why he took a mercenary from the feudal city of McLean? Caselin jokingly replies, why is there any interest if he pays decently? Logan, hearing this phrase, thinks rather, this is a good answer. Afterwards, he notes that he has a clear mind. But suddenly they stop when they hear a hated man screaming nearby. The freaks must be faster. If they are late, he will kill them all. A man swings his whip and hits the people in front. Their clothes are dirty and torn, and shackles with metal balls tied to them prevent them from walking calmly. Caselin turns to Logan McLean and notes that he must know that Harren is called a city of mercenaries and slaves. Ahead they will meet similar ones more often, because there is a slave market further away. He sadly replies that he already knows that. He is going to go there to buy one slave. Along the road, on which there are tents on both sides, there are people in cages nearby, and their hands are shackled with wooden shackles. Logan heads to one of the owners, who, noticing him, contemptuously thinks, I'm a clueless hillbilly. But at the same time, he asks the young lord to come here with a smile. He should come just for a second. He can offer him slaves at the cheapest price. But the blonde doesn't have time to agree on everything. When suddenly he sees Caselon passing by, he gasps in fear and falling to his knees asks the question, why is he here? Logan McLean, noticing this reaction, understands with pleasure that he is now calmer. He hired this guy for a reason. Having walked a little further forward, he stops near a large tent and, looking around, notes that there are much more guards here. It looks like this is the same place. A gray-haired man immediately approaches him, hinting that the young lord most likely understands where he has come. He confidently replies that he wants to buy a gnome. Then the old man stepped aside and opened the way for him. That's right, he went to the right place. Unusual races are very rare, so they take special care of them. He should pass quickly. Logan, suddenly looking to the side, sees two tired girls with long, pointed ears in one of the cages. The man notes that it was extremely difficult to catch these elves. Had he ever seen them before? He can tell you about them. But Logan McLean interrupts him and declares enough is enough. They must bring him the one he asked for. The old man immediately answers in a trembling voice, as if he said that he came for the gnome. A creature comes out to meet them from the depths of the tent, with shackles on his hands and feet, outwardly reminiscent of simply a low man. The old man, continuing to speak in a completely insincere, caring voice, notes how the young lord can see, it is immediately clear from him what race he is from. It will be very useful to him. Even among the great dwarf masters, this one is one of the few with the rank of expert. Logan immediately repeats in shock, expert rank. By their nature, gnomes skillfully use their hands. They create and repair objects, seeing this as the meaning of life from childhood to old age, Expert rank far exceeds what he was looking for. He quickly realizes that with him, he won't have to worry about anything. Therefore, Logan McLean eagerly asked, what is the price? The old man shows two fingers and grins, since he is an expert, then at least 200,000. But Logan McLean, gritting his teeth and clicking his tongue, exclaims, does he look like a simpleton? The man is lost from such a reaction, and after a pause, he finally gathers his strength and answers in a trembling voice, 50,000. He gives in to them. After some time, when the three of them left the tent and the old man poured salt after them, Caselin mentally noted he dropped the price by 150,000 in just a couple of minutes. The dwarf, turning to Logan, says that he is a ruthless person. But on the contrary, he proudly replies that it was elementary. The gnome frowns and wonders where he is leading him. Logan McLean answers briefly at the McLean estate in the southwest. He will be busy making items for the gnome, looking down at the ground and saying, that's what he thought. Logan, noticing such a reaction, reasons that these creatures are skilled craftsmen, 
but this does not apply to those who were sold into slavery. After all, despite their natural inclinations, without passion they cannot create a real work of art. To restore his enthusiasm, he has an idea. Then at first he announces, not very clearly, 20 years. If he tries his best for 20 years, he will send the gnome back to the mountains. 20 years is nothing for his species, right? He hears such a proposal, looks up at Logan McLean with incredible delight, and tries to find the right question, how? Suddenly an angry scream of a man is heard next to them. He needs to be grabbed. The slave runs away. Kicking up dust, a guy runs past Logan, carrying a girl on his back, who is holding on tightly to him. The young slave with two toned eyes clenches his teeth as beads of sweat pour down his face. At that moment, those around him began shouting to the others to grab him. The boy continued to run away, and everyone shouted that the slave was running away. He ran with incredible speed, holding his sister on his back, and suddenly a man appeared next to him, who shouted that he was here and kicked the slave, after which he turned towards the bald man and told him that he was caught. The merchant got angry and asked him how dare he behave like that. He bit him. After this scream, he kicked him on the back again, and he clenched his teeth from the piercing pain that he felt after the blow and tears flowed from his eyes. The sister looked at him in shock and said in a trembling voice that she was fine. Caselin, who was walking behind Logan, said, They are slaves, and there is no point in stopping here now. Logan replied that he understood this, but suddenly wondered what it was. Their eyes are different colors, red and blue, somewhere he has already seen this. Suddenly he remembered that it was the same Victor and was dumbfounded with surprise. Caselin looked at him questioningly and Logan replied, Nothing happened, but he needs to give him a minute to think. He continued to look at the slave and wondered how this was even possible. He really didn't expect to meet an aristocrat murderer here. In a past life, there lived an extremely famous aura user in the kingdom. At first he was a slave who escaped by killing his master. He was wanted for the murder of both countless soldiers and knights of the pursuers and the aristocrat. He had to hide like a criminal. Approximately ten years later, he appeared again and already used aura, thereby proving that he had risen above ordinary people. He killed the entire family that previously owned it, and since then killed every aristocrat he came across in the Grandee. For this, he received the unusual nickname of the Aura User Killing Aristocrat. The incident with the disappearance of one slave happened a year after he became a mercenary, so now that person should not have been bought yet. If he saves this boy, then in the future an Aura User will be on his side. But the problem is that, but before he had time to think this thought through, he heard an incredibly loud scream. The mustachioed man started screaming, Someone, let them get this terrible guy away from him. The boy bit him on the leg and bit through it until it bled. He is an unstoppable killer maniac. He screamed to let him go, and Logan wondered if he was a deadly weapon that killed his allies. He could just lock him up. He continued to ask to let him go and called the guy names, gritting his teeth in pain, after which he tried to kick him in the head and shouted, Who dared to interfere with him? Logan stopped his leg with his sword, and the man wondered who he was, and when did he manage to come here. After that, he noticed a special sign on his armor, and realized what was happening, removed his leg and said, So he is a client. God, it was so awkward. His facial expression changed to a softer one, and he said, When the goods do not obey, he educates him. Does he need any advice? He replied that he wanted to buy a couple of slaves. The man asked again, Is he talking about these children? Their eyes are a rare color, and therefore they are expensive. Are they confident in their purchase? Logan replied that he should name the price, and the man said that they cost at least 10000 each. At the same moment, Logan was thinking, a strong young slave costs about 300 gold coins, and he increased the price a lot of times for children from whom all that was left was skin and bones. He thinks it's quite expensive. 10000 for an aristocrat murderer is cheap but he doesn't know about it. The man expressed a greedy smile on his face and Logan understood, besides, he doesn't want to let himself get rich. Because of this, he asked the merchant a question, did he increase the price 30 times for a child who is about to lose consciousness? And the second one already seems to have one foot in the grave. The boy's sister held him in her arms with tears in her eyes and looked at Logan in fear, after which she said in a trembling voice, brother, the merchant answered Logan, and yet there is no one else to buy here therefore, but before he could finish speaking, Logan offered him 500 for each. This is a price higher than for a healthy slave. The merchant replied, God sir, 
but that wouldn't even cover their original price. He laughed and Logan, frowning his eyebrows menacingly and loudly, asked him in his opinion, he doesn't know how much slaves cost. After that, he squeezed the sword in his hands out of anger, and the man reacted in fear to his actions and thought dumbfounded. Victor is always nothing but trouble, and he is sure that it will not get better in the future, which is why he lowered his gaze and thanked the gentleman for the deal. After some time, Victor woke up on the shoulders of the Kaesolan, who was carrying him. Victor was stunned by what was happening and jumped up from his seat, and his sister exclaimed to him, Brother, Kaesolan noticed his movement and asked if he had woken up yet. His wounds shouldn't have healed so quickly. Logan answered, and indeed, he quickly came to his senses. At the same moment, he began to think. He was secretly emitting a power that could barely be noticed as they walked. This is better than the magic of most low-level priests. However, he turned towards the surprised children, around whom bright rays of light were shining, and he wondered if it was the children who saw power. Even Kaesolan noticed this. It's probably just a coincidence. Victor squeezed the shoulders of Kaesolan, and a moment later found himself on the ground with a roar, and running up, swung his fist and shouted at Logan to die, attacking him. He managed to dodge his sudden attack and grabbed him by the hand, after which he threw him aside and Victor screamed loudly. He grabbed his neck and lifted him up and said, he doesn't know if he's obsessed or just stupid. Victor groaned from being strangled, and his sister shouted to him, brother. He shouted back at her, Rhea, she should run away from here. Logan asked him again, boy, did he still not understand what situation he was in? Does he look like a slave owner? Victor clenched his teeth in fear and drops of sweat rolled off his face from anxiety and horror. Logan continued to say, it's good that he has a fighting spirit, but he must learn to choose his opponent wisely. From now on, he hopes that he won't have to warn him about this a second time, Victor. If he obeys him, then he assures that his sister will be safe. But if this happens again, then he will get rid of him and, of course, his sister, he exclaimed loudly at the moment when Logan finally let go of him and fell to the ground. After which he grabbed his neck because of the unpleasant sensations and Logan, bending down to him, carefully examined him and thought with caution that this was enough for him. He plans to make him a knight. Victor was very surprised by this proposal and asked again from it, Is he really talking about him? Logan answered, exactly like that. He probably knows that a knight is an honorary aristocrat. As a slave, he will be able to bypass these conditions, and so will his sister. Rhea and Victor looked at each other, and, standing up, he shouted loudly with confidence in his eyes that he agreed to these conditions. Logan smiled back at him and thought that he knew that his cruel nature could be controlled through his own sister. After that, he said, great, then they will start training when they return home, and also hammer. He suggests leaving here for a minute. Calmer, who was holding on to his backpack, asked him with some feeling of bewilderment with him. Meanwhile, Kaeselin gave his hand to the powerless Victor, and Logan told Hammer aside that he would write a contract, and he asked him again, a contract? Logan replied that it would be magical, and that if he served him for twenty years, he would send him back to the mountains. Hammer was very surprised by this proposal and shouted the question in response to the mountains. Will he really return him to his people? Logan replied that he understands that it is difficult to believe simple words. But what's wrong? Doesn't he want this? Hammer shouted to him, Of course he wants and agrees to anything for this. He will do anything for him. Confusion appeared on his face, and a tear fell from his beard. He simply could not believe that he was telling the truth and thanked him for it, calling him a man initially, and then correcting himself to Mr. His whole body trembled, and he bowed at his feet. Logan thought that if the contract was enough to restore his motivation, then for him it would be a plus. Thanks to this, he will be able to get whatever he wants. Although he gained even more, since he managed to get himself an aristocrat killer. Preparations for war between regions are going quite smoothly. While Logan does not know that rumors about his strange behavior have already spread throughout the McLean domains, while he was away his reputation has sunk to the very bottom and broken through this, and also that Rick is drowning in turmoil, trying to change something. Rick was thinking about what he was doing, damn young master. At this moment, he smiled widely and raised his hand with joy and said, Young master, he has finally returned. Logan turned in his direction and asked him how he was doing, Rick. Rick grinned and asked him with delight, Young master, is he really interested in this? His hands were shaking from the force with which he squeezed them, and Logan told him that he saw that he was smiling. After that, Rick rudely asked him what he was doing anyway. Does he know what people say about him? They call him an idiot who spent 150,000 gold on monster meat. 
A few days earlier, a guy with glasses spread his arms while standing in front of a crowd of people and told them something. Those around them wondered in horror what? By monster meat. What a moron he is, the guy said in response. Young Mr. Logan McLean from the barony of McLean wants to buy it. People around were wondering, Logan McLean? One of them heard about this. This is the guy who ruined his engagement. Another man standing next to them shouted, Is he talking about the guy who abused his fiance? He thought that spreading rumors about the monster meat would increase the sales of it in the market, but he was not aware of the details of the master's background. Broken engagement? He thought he was just crazy, but he turned out to be an incredible idiot. Despite such thoughts, Philip's instincts screamed that he should not miss the opportunity, one gold per kilogram. Not a single mercenary will refuse to sell garbage even to a scumbag if he is willing to pay. Philip asked them if they wanted to make money. Then they must bring him all the meat they have. The surrounding people raised their hands and shouted back at him. The aggressive sales process prompted the mercenaries to bring meat. Logan's rumor spread throughout all the fiefs near the call. Logan laughed loudly and said that Philip completed his task just perfectly. Rick asked how he could laugh at such a moment. He should just look at those they brought and think how much gossip they have heard if they stand with such faces. And he shouldn't worry about this because it will all be over soon. Rick answered him with a bewildered and sad expression on his face that he should not be so calm. Even the head of the house is furious. Patrick, meanwhile, asked, Well, did he enjoy running away from home? Logan replied, It really turned out to be useful for traveling. Patrick raised his gaze menacingly and replied, He had heard rumors about his crazy affairs, but he was glad that he spent his time usefully. Dogen, putting his hands behind his back, replied that rumors are just rumors, and he is not the least bit ashamed of what he did. His stepmother Margin was stunned by this behavior and shouted to her husband Patrick, Can he see, dear? The first young master does not even realize where his place is and how his actions can affect their honor and name. Logan replied, Mother, it was unnecessary. He spent almost nothing from the funds received for breaking the engagement. Marion was surprised and, frowning, shouted at him to repeat what he said. After that, she screamed again, Patrick, no, but did he hear it? Will she really take his side now? Patrick put his hand on the table and said that this was enough. She continued to scream, The first young master is completely to blame. He got angry and shouted back at her that he had already said enough. Marion was dumbfounded and trembled, and he continued to say that he would like to talk with Logan alone and asks him to leave them. Him, how can he treat her like this? He replied that he would give him a final warning. Logan looked into his eyes with fear and did not move. Moments later, they were alone and Patrick went to the window and asked him what was happening to him. He offers to talk about what's going on and why everything is the way it is. Logan, who was standing close to him, thought that it looked like he wouldn't back down this time and replied that he wouldn't understand even if he talked about it. Patrick asked again, but does he even understand what he's doing? Is he aware of how others speak of him? They consider him a cruel, evil, money-obsessed man and lately even insane. How much longer will he have to cover it? If this is just a period that will end in the future, then let him know about it so that he can at least apologize to his late mother. Logan lowered his gaze and thought he just couldn't believe that he mentioned her. This had never happened in his previous life, even when he was kicked out of the house. Perhaps he has not yet lost hope for him, and he decided to ask his father to give him one more year. After this time, he will understand why he is doing this now. Let him do him this favor, father. In all honesty, he said these words and Patrick was dumbfounded when he listened to him. After that, Logan slammed the doors and left the room. Patrick was left sitting at his desk alone and thinking, wow, how strange this word sounds when a parent and child are talking. In his hand was a special medallion, the chain from which rang in his hands, and he thought, if Logan does not answer for his words in a year, then he will have to make a decision, because first of all he is the head of the house, and only then his father. Inside the locket was a photograph of a beautiful woman named Rianne, and he apologized to her because he had no idea what he was up to. He promised to protect him at all costs so that he would grow up to be a good person, but it looks like he should have been more careful. Meanwhile, Logan came across Ronian and with a red face shouted his name, after which he asked him in surprise, has he already awakened his power? Ronian clenched his hands into fists and with a sane contented expression showed him his skills. Magical power emanated around his hands and he said he knew that he could handle this too. Logan grinned and said with a smile on his face, and he's only 14 years old. At the same moment, he thought, in his previous life, this did not awaken until the War of Regions, but now it happened faster. 
Ronian replied, It's all thanks to him. Logan asked him again, But how did this happen? He answered, The knights tried to prevent him from meeting him when he returned, and then... But before he could finish speaking, Logan grabbed him by the shoulders, turned his gaze to the knight standing next to him, and asked what. The knights began to scratch their heads with embarrassment and look in different directions. And Logan mentally wonders, did he awaken this to see him? And when this happened, did he manage to break through two knights? Ronian beamed with pride in himself and Logan laughed and shouted to him that he really did well. If he teaches him the secret of the Divine Sword, then when the power stabilizes, he will be able to become much stronger than in his previous life. A house in the south of the barony, Logan arrived there and told Duane that he had returned. He was surprised and told him, so it's him, young master. He replied, here are the 350 rank mercenaries he asked to hire. The surrounding men began to whisper among themselves, is it him? Whoever called them here then left them in this crumbling house for ten days. They weren't fooled, were they? The Baron's family wouldn't get involved with the mercenary guild unless they went crazy. Who knows? Maybe they really are crazy. There are already bad rumors about this guy. Let them look at how he wears a sword and armor. Is he trying to look like a knight or something? Logan got angry and thought, God, he needs to pacify these scumbags fighting for their lives now, otherwise they will not be controlled. He called one of the guys standing in the crowd, addressing him rudely, and he asked again, pointing his finger at himself in bewilderment, what was going on? Is he talking to him? Logan asked, in his opinion, he looks funny in armor and with a sword. He was very surprised and replied that he didn't understand what he was talking about, and at that very moment he wondered how he could hear him from there. He replied, of course, that he didn't think so, otherwise he would have to answer for his words, but a mercenary of rank does not have abilities that could allow him to look down on others. The man was dumbfounded with bewilderment and Logan asked him again, did she insult him? Looks like even an insignificant person has pride, he should come forward. If he can hit him at least once, he will immediately pay him a year's wages and let him go. Everyone around him was very surprised at this proposal and he continued to say that he was betting his honor as an aristocrat on this and the rest would be witnesses to his promise. They stopped opposite each other, and the man answered him, Okay. He won't go back on his words, will he? They came close to each other, and the man turned out to be much taller than Logan himself, and looked at him from above with a greedy smile. People around him wondered how healthy he was. Maybe he had a B rank. The other guy answered, Not yet, but he will get up when he completes this job. Logan breathed a sigh of relief and wondered why he is so confident in himself. The man smiled and said that he could start. Logan asked him, is he? He will regret this. The enemy replied that he had been using the sword much longer than himself, and therefore he should not worry about it. Could it give him some additional advantage? A moment later, an incredibly strong Logan fist approached him, met with bright sparks, and hit him right in the face. Those around him opened their mouths in shock and looked in surprise at what had happened. The man received a serious blow to his face and his teeth flew out of his mouth. Logan looked at his body lying on the ground with an arrogant expression. He stuck his tongue out of his mouth and lay on the ground motionless. Everyone was surprised by the incident and Logan simply straightened his armor with his hand and exhaled again, smiled, clenched his hand into a fist and asked, who else wants to discuss it here? No one understood, is he already using his power at that age? This is just funny. Caselin, who stood nearby, also looked at him in surprise and thought he considered him unusual, but did not suspect that he was so good. Logan said, it looks like there are no people here at all. Then have them allow you to formally introduce yourself. He's Logan McLean, the one who called them here. Many people are probably curious about why he spends money on mercenaries. He plans to turn them into crossbowmen and cavalrymen. Having proposed this idea, he looked enthusiastically at those around him, who frowned at him and were dumbfounded. They started talking to each other about what was going on. Did he say something about cavalry crossbowmen? Does anyone use a crossbow on a horse? It takes a lot of time to reload. Caselin came closer to Logan and whispered in his ear, Sir, a crossbow is not a suitable weapon for cavalrymen, to which Logan replied that he knew this, and he asked again, Does he know? Then why would he do this? The crossbow is more powerful than the bow, but it takes inexperienced shooters more than a minute to reload. To do this, they place their foot on the stirrup, but on horseback, they will very quickly lose the ability to shoot, even if they have three or four loaded crossbows with them. Their bewilderment is understandable. For now, let them think that he is throwing money away by pretending to be a soldier. This doesn't affect anything at all. 
He asks Kaselin to train them thoroughly and later he will understand why it was necessary. The crossbowmen and cavalrymen would have powerful Maclean forces even after the fief's war. Kaselin silently looked at him and bowed and replied, Everything will be as he orders. A few days later, Logan sat at the table and looked at the documents and thought, Out of 350 mercenaries, only 312 passed a simple qualification test. This is very good. Someone addressed him as master and he paid attention to it. It was a hammer who held documents in his hands and asked, What is this? Logan asked him again with a smile, Has he already read this? This is a diagram of the crossbow he will have to make. He silently looked at the paper one more time and Logan said that he understood that it looked rather rough to the eyes of a professional. He thought about the fact that he had used this weapon for several decades in a past life and roughly outlined the structure of this item. He is a dwarf with the rank of expert, so he should be able to handle this. Hammer asked again, he needs to place a container in which there will be projectiles from the back of the crossbow and do it. Self-recharging. Also, is it supposed to shoot three times in a row? And who came up with this terrible idea? Logan answered him, which is why Hammer frowned. He felt ashamed of his words, and he tried to correct himself and spoke out. If you think about it, this is very innovative. Logan smiled and blushed after his praise, and Hammer continued to speak. But the intertwined cables in such a mechanism would not hold up and break, and because of the wooden box at the back, the shooters would be uncomfortable. How to be? Logan asked how he knew this. He looked at him questioningly and told him that he needed to decide this. Behind him there was a loud and bright explosion of anger, he felt. Logan noticed this and asked him not to get angry and listen, because he was just joking. He should reduce the size of the projectiles and where they are located. He's right, one shot will be enough. Instead, you can make the container detachable to reload with each shot. For convenience, you can call this a weapons shop. Hammer responded in surprise that this was incredible. Even in the hands of a professional, a crossbow will not fire twice in a minute. This will be the weapon of the new time. Logan thought with a smile that this would be invented in the future. Hammer squeezed the paper more tightly in his hands and said, And all it takes is a container, a spring, a little wood, glue, and a bowstring. These are very motivating challenges. Everything is fine, and he will try to do it. Logan crawled closer to him and asked how long he thought it would take. He asked again, is he asking him to create something he has never heard of in a certain period of time? Logan answered him, people invented these weapons. Hammer was very surprised by his words and exclaimed, what? This simply cannot be. Where and who? Logan, because of his mistake, was in a state of discomfort and answered him, it doesn't matter, if he thinks that he can't handle it, then he should give up. Calmer answered, God, okay, he can do everything in a month, he will create something much better. He's still learning what it's like and dealing with the dwarf's ego. After some time, the action moved to the street. Victor was running at incredible speed in an unknown direction and trying to catch his breath. Logan gave him a workout and shouted with dissatisfaction. He slowed down again. He can do better. Victor continued to try to pass these tests. His face turned red from loss of strength and he clenched his teeth from the tension. Logan frowned and thought. Since they arrived, he had only fed them and let them sleep food can change you beyond recognition. His legs began to shake. Logan noticed immediately and shouted at him to rest as Victor fell to the ground. He stopped and tried to catch his breath, when suddenly Rhea ran up to him and shouted, Brother. Logan, who was watching what was happening, was thinking, a 14-year-old guy who, smaller than his peers, ran 20 kilometers without a break. He is quite talented, but what he likes most about him is his perseverance and endurance. He shouldn't have worried, Rhea wiped the sweat from his face with a towel and gave him a jug of water, tending to him with care. Logan thought, it's obvious that he was not a killer from birth, which means his life has changed a lot. He smiled when he looked at his sister and Logan became sad when he suddenly shouted to him enough. He should get up and it's time to move on to the next workout. Victor rose to his feet and Logan shouted to him, he will study the sword technique of the Kingdom of Grandia. Every knight student masters it. He threw the sword into his hands and asked him to look at it and learn to do the same, rolling up the sleeves of his jacket. He gripped the sword tighter and swung it in the correct manner, showing him this movement. Victor looked at him carefully and thought that he was very tired. He dreams of losing consciousness and falling asleep right here. But if this is the price of good food and sleep, then he clenched his teeth and blood poured out of his mouth, after which he angrily swung his sword and repeated this movement after Logan, who was dumbfounded for a moment when he saw the technique of Victor's movements and thought. He repeated the exact movement and even breaths, 
and this was the first time he showed it. It is unlikely that Ronian was as good at his age. After these thoughts, he smiled and said out loud, if he breaks his stamina and perfectly executes the kingdom technique more than 1,000 times in a row, he can be called a knight. Victor looked at him carefully and asked with delight, a knight? His cheeks turned red from the idea of such a life and Logan asked him with a smile, he can handle this, right? Victor shouted back, that's right. Logan said, well, if he needs something for training, he will have to tell Rick about it. He will most likely be able to get him anything. Victor replied that he didn't need anything and Logan asked him again, is he really sure of this? Victor replied, let him just continue to look after his sister and that will be enough. Confidence was expressed in his gaze and Logan, with a smile on his face, thought that this was simply excellent. Victor will not be able to go to war, but in the future he will become a huge support for the McLean family. And also, now the next position. An army of mercenaries and new weapons will become a formidable force, but you shouldn't rely too much on them. The hammer may not be able to get a good crossbow, and even if he can handle it, there is a chance that the mercenaries will not master it. Since he's essentially put everything in the hands of others, he needs to come up with a backup plan. So he's saying he wants to join the knight's training. This question was asked by Patrick to his son. Logan stood confidently in front of him and shouted, That's right. After some time, a new day came and a man in armor named Heinkel, who was the captain of the knightly order of the McLean family, shouted, Attention everyone. From today, the first young Master Logan will join the training of their knightly order. The surrounding knights wondered in bewilderment, what was going on? Did they hear right? Is first young Master going to train? He defeated the Dominion, and now the knights seem like some kind of joke to him. Heinkel at that moment remembered his conversation with Patrick, turning pale with anger. He stood in front of his desk and asked, Is he going to send the young Master to train with the knights? But they won't be happy about it at all. Patrick replied that he was not asking to be treated specially. Better let him warm him up like a new recruit. Heinkel grabbed his head and thought in horror, even if he said so, but this is his master's son. It would be easier to treat him well. Logan turned to him and asked him not to worry when he saw how he grabbed his head and said that if during this week he catches up with the others in academic performance, then he will pretend as if nothing happened and leave them alone. Heinkel opened his mouth in surprise and a moment later was able to answer him that everything was fine, reflecting with a satisfied expression on his face that this week the level of difficulty of the training would increase three times. After some time, the knights were incredibly tired while practicing. They completely lacked the strength to do certain movements. Many knights carried their buddies on their backs and shouted while drops of fatigue dripped from their faces, what kind of training is this? Heinekel shouted to them with contentment, and they are preparing to die. They are cavalry. Is it possible not to know what it's like for horses? They should feel how difficult it is for them when they are fully equipped. The knights turned to him and wondered what kind of nonsense he was talking about. One of them said that he was surprised when he said that they would train in armor. They have to go through because of that terrible troublemaker. But he won't last long, maybe three days. Although most likely he won't last even one day. Logan absolutely also repeated all their movements and training and suddenly began to outrun the surrounding knights and ran into the distance of the forest, being the first. The knights did not wonder what was happening and looked questioningly in his direction. Heinkel, also looking after him, understood that this was simply incredible. Is he really the leader among the knights? On top of everything else, he smiles. At this rate, not he but the knights will fall behind the program. He clenched his teeth in rage and looked at the ground, after which he sharply shouted to everyone to stop, and Logan did not expect to hear this and was surprised. He shouted to rest for ten minutes and all the knights tried to catch their breath while sitting on the ground. Logan let go of his partner and Heinkel approached him, who smiled and asked him, Young master, is he coping with the task or is he tired? At that moment he was thinking that this was obvious, just let him answer him honestly and he could cancel this crazy training. Logan replied that this was tolerable for him and Heinkel asked in bewilderment, what? Logan replied that this was a pretty good training, knights go through this every day and therefore are probably strong, he is looking forward to the next training. Those lying on the ground from fatigue looked in horror at Heinkel, who did not expect to hear these words and thought, this is absolutely not what he was looking for. Logan looked at him questioningly with a grin, and after a while night fell on the street. I looked around and wondered, have all the knights left? Training with them is his insurance in case all his plans fail. If all else fails, he will join the knights and fight on the front line, so you need to get close to them now and establish a connection, 
and even though his strength can be developed through meditation, but it is also important to train your body. This is what the training of the Order of Knights is useful for, recreating a bright magical flame near his chest. He said that he knew it would work. Since the core of strength is growing, he does not even feel any fatigue. At the same moment, he sharply pulled out his sword, closed his eyes and swung it with another sharp movement, after which the sword glowed with flame and he wondered, is this the power of the one star core? Maybe when he reaches the second star, he will gain the strength to match a high-ranking knight like his father. His face flushed with satisfaction as his body trembled. After some time, some examples of weapons appeared in front of him, and he shouted that this is a failure, this too. Didn't he come up with anything else? Where is the carving he asked for? This thing only fires one shot. Calmer, who stood opposite him, could not object to anything and Logan asked again, what about a weapons shop? Didn't he tell you that this needs to be implemented? Hammer was very angry and looked at him furiously and said, but after which Logan sharply grabbed his head and apologized to him, saying that he forgot there was no need to say that. Hammer immediately answered him that everything was correct. He may be his master, but he is the pride of the artisan. Logan said, if he is incapable of doing better, then nothing can be done. Several weeks of work in vain, he expected too much from him. It was his fault. He misjudged his abilities and made a mistake. He spent so much money for nothing. Hammer became even more angry and trembled with rage, after which he spoke out, one month. He will create a new weapon in a month and return. After these words, he broke his ready-made weapons into several parts and walked towards the exit from the office. Logan looked after him and wondered, wow, he was so angry. What about a new one? If he weighs it even more, will he build something amazing? Just what you would expect from a gnome. A month later, the hammer arrived to him with a new weapon, from which several shots could be fired at once, and showed it on the field on the street, hitting two arrows almost on the target at a long distance, after which he asked again, what would he say about it? This item makes one more shot, and it's easier to hold with one hand, and you can also change weapon shop. Logan looked at the embodiment of the weapon with his mouth open and thought, holy saints, he reloaded it in less than five seconds. The radius is not as large as the weapons from the past, and it is smaller, but it is better suited for the cavalrymen. As he said, all that remains is to insert the weapon shop prepared in advance. He has been working hard for a whole month to create this, and is not going to be more important, but let him keep this in mind. These were his words, but Hammer has even surpassed himself, and he simply cannot believe that they have already come so far, although there is still a whole month before the war. And his face turned red and he grinned, after which the Hammer asked him, Sir, is he even listening to him? Logan grabbed him, lifted him up and said with a feeling of incredible gratitude that this was a great job. He did a good job, Hammer. Long live the dwarves, long live the Hammer. He was very angry because of such actions and shouted, they could be seen. He is not a child. Logan looked at him with delight and said again, Hammer. He asked him again, what? Logan immediately asked the question, could he make 400 of these things in a month? The crossbow fires two arrows and immediately reloads. They stick with incredible speed into the thick bark of the tree, and Caselin watches this with a weapon in his hands. The two mercenaries, seeing this, say in shock, this is amazing. It lies very far away. Besides, it shoots several times in a row. This is a very interesting crossbow. Even Caselin wonders how this weapon can do such a thing. Is it muzzle loading and shoots at a long distance with such and such speed? If you equip this army of more than 300 cavalrymen, it's even scary to think about the consequences. So afterwards he turns to Logan McLean and notes that he is truly an amazing person. Is this what he meant when he spoke about crossbowmen and cavalrymen? He confirms with a satisfied smile, yes, sort of like that. At the same time, he understands that it was not easy for the hammer. Other masters helped him, but it was impossible to predict that his order would come two weeks ahead of schedule and even make an additional 100 crossbows. Hammer, after all the work done, simply lay on his back and held a sign that said that he was now on a break. But at the same time, Logan still waved his hand at him with a smile and said that they would be very useful to him. At the same time, he thought that a dwarf with the rank of expert was something. He would like to share it with both the knightly order and the soldiers, but he has financial problems. And technology leakage, the poet therefore needs to slow down his ambitions for now. Then, turning to Caselin, he orders, from this day on, the mercenaries must take crossbows and go to defend the mountains outside their territory. He heard this confusedly asking what. But Logan McLean, not wanting to listen to the refusal, defiantly asks, 
Does he want to say that this is impossible? But he immediately looks away to the two arrows that are still sticking out of the tree and thoughtfully answers, maybe this will work out. But Logan, taking a step forward, corrects him, not only can he, he must make it happen. Otherwise it was all in vain. Then he turns to the mercenaries and asks each to take a crossbow. Caselin, looking at him, thinks he wouldn't develop such a weapon to kill monsters. Is he really preparing for war? When the snow gradually melts and lush grass and bright yellow dandelions slowly sprout on the ground, the knight says with admiration, wow, he has tremendous stamina. Logan McLean runs forward at this moment, carrying two knights on his back. Watching him discuss this, it's just funny. Is it about jeans? He drags for two at the same time. If he takes after his father, he must be good with a sword. And yet, they should remember the Dominion. How can you compare him with an old man? After all, he lost to his own younger brother when he had not yet awakened. But despite this, it is quite surprising that he has been able to withstand all the training for a month now. Training that was originally designed to oust Logan has now become entrenched within the Order. Two knights, having finally taken off their equipment with pleasant fatigue in their bodies, are happily talking. It was difficult but it is more useful than just running, right? This is how you need to train in a knightly order. They suddenly became an incentive for low-ranking knights, who usually did everything carelessly. The man approached the horse and gently stroking it asked, Ray is difficult to carry him, right? He is grateful for it. They also created a knight, what it was like for their animals, and began to empathize with them. Sitting on the other's back, a little bashfully asks, Is he heavy? Yes, he just moved yesterday replies that it doesn't matter. He heard this fool. Strengthening ties between knights has become a bonus. Heinkel, watching their trail with a smile, thinks he continued to train them like this because the young lord did not leave, but the result surprised him. Thinking about this, he looks adoringly at Logan's back while a proud smile blooms on his face. This is his lucky talisman, which came to him on its own. Logan McLean feels this look, rubs his neck in embarrassment, and is perplexed, now he has very strange feelings. As night falls, a bright glowing moon appears in the cloudy sky. He, sitting in his room on the bed with his eyes closed, thinks intently, having exhausted his body with training, he will begin to stimulate inner awareness through meditation. Repetition and coordination of this bears fruit. He has recently noticed signs of a change in power. If he can improve this as planned, then the Superman, or a master and archmage, will no longer be a threat to him like in his previous life. After Logan slowly exhales, and immediately a core flares up opposite his heart, and then he begins to read special spells. At the same time, he begins to emit bright light and fiery tongues of aura. After some time of concentrated spell reading, Logan McLean clenches his fists, and in the next moment there is a bright splash in his aura, which gradually subsides, and a core of an even more saturated color appears in front of him, in the orbit of which another similar core appears, but only smaller in sizes. He understands, everything is ready now. Two star core. Now he has the base to learn the following secret sword technique, the killer iron cut. Given the power gained from the first technique, he is confident that the second will exceed his expectations regarding power. Now, if he had managed to master this before the war, then even high-ranking knights would not have been afraid of him. When the cold and winter finally recede, and in their place comes the bright warm sun with bright lush greenery, then at the same time scary green humpbacked zombies are walking across the green field, but they are distracted by the sound of hooves. The monsters, frightened, squeak loudly and run away from several rows on horses holding crossbows. Caselin frowns and, raising his clenched fist, gives the order to everyone else. The crossbowmen and cavalrymen immediately rush into battle, and he announces, charge. They must shoot. The men immediately load the crossbow, point them straight at the zombies, and shoot. The blows land right on their backs, causing them to squeak and wheeze even louder, and then fall down, defeated. The wars look after them, and Caselin sighs with relief. The men, seeing such an outcome, smile in shock and discuss it enthusiastically. The crossbow has almost no recoil. His shot pierced the monster's head and hit the head of another that stood behind. At this time, Logan approaches them on horseback and, having watched that short battle, mentally notes that the hollow of more than 100 monsters was destroyed in less than 10 seconds. Their old habits of using a regular crossbow don't help much, but they are able to reload faster. It was not for nothing that they went so far to hunt. Caselin asks with a smile, is he happy? Logan McLean confirms this, sort of. 
During the first hunt, they showed a terrible result, but now they have improved. But suddenly the smile on his face disappears, and he asks the Lord to ease his worries. But why does he need it? He had never heard of a mercenary army with such power. Is he planning to kill all the monsters on the continent? At this time, the mercenaries are putting all the zombies into one big pile, and Logan is trying to find the most appropriate answer. Suddenly someone screams, young lord. He turns around confused and asks, what's the matter? Caselin also adds, what's wrong? A knight on horseback rushes towards them and explains that he was sent by a man named Rick. Logan McLean asks again, puzzled, Rick. The guy announces that yesterday Lord Tesron declared war on them. Hearing this, he frowns in bewilderment. The Viscount screams loudly. He accuses the House of McMahon of insulting his ancestor by wrongfully deciding his life. Patrick McLean looks at the image of his head in a glass pink ball. While the high-ranking people at home discuss this, this happened in the distant past, and he decided to get even now. Will the war start now? Marion Kairos turns to Patrick and says excitedly, Dear, Heinkel, sitting on the other side of the table, also excitedly asks what they will do. The number of the Viscount's knightly order alone exceeds them. Even with a lord, the chances of winning are very small. Discussions also begin at the long table. They should request support and send a knight to guard the city. But in this case, if the knights, who have power, are forced out, then the city will plunge into chaos. No, first they need to send an envoy to negotiate a truce. Finally, Patrick McLean cannot stand it, and frowning heavily, he hits the table with his hand and announces silence. Even though his family's power is not as great as before, yet these people constantly declare war without any particular reason. It is obvious that this was planned on purpose. Did they even think before they mentioned the world? They must prepare for war, and have to make a plan for what that looks like. He doesn't accept objections. The men fall silent and look at him submissively. Marion also looks up at him with a pitying look. Only one among the courtiers timidly raises his hand and clarifies, Will the young master also participate in the war? Hearing this surprise, she first turns to the man, then looks at Patrick, waiting for his answer. He approaches the window and coldly replies that his sons will go to war along with the others. Ronian has awakened him, and Logan is old enough to make his own contribution. After his announcement, whispers begin once again, by the way about him. There was a rumor that the young lord was training with the knights. Since they both can use force, they will give them more support. Rick, who at that time was standing near the wall with the rest of the servants, realizes with horror that things are bad. Lord is leaving now. Then, running along the long corridor, he realizes that he must report to him about what happened immediately. Finally, the messenger is sent and wrote, and sums it all up. This is what happened. Logan McLean frowns seriously and wonders, according to his memories from his past life, the war was supposed to start only in two months. What could influence this? The brown-haired friend insists that the young lord must hurry. They will undoubtedly ignore all customs and go straight to fight. They need to leave now to at least make it to the middle of the battle. Hearing this, he clenches his fists and understands that there is no time to think. Looking to the side, he sees Caselin, who, standing in front of the smiling warriors, announces that his squad of mercenaries is always ready to get down to business. But still, he frowns and tells him that he is not very surprised by this news. Caselin still explains with a smile that they are now in such a state that they are also ready to start a war. Logan sadly notes that this sounds terrible, but he insists they have excellent weapons in their hands. It is obvious that they want to take advantage of this. Logan McLean continues to look at them and understands that these guys are too self-confident, but smiling, he also notes, but they are confident for a reason. They left no chance for the flock of monsters that had increased since last winter. But what's the point if the war has started? They just need to win. Now they have enough strength for this. The McLean house was in a fever from the news of an unexpected war, but all three fourteen people were confident of their own victory. Among the green forest, Kaiselin's order is heard. A detachment of mercenaries must prepare to move out. The war began earlier than Logan planned. The day after this announcement, Tesron troops appeared in the McLean territory. Their numbers exceeded the vassals' expectations. A knight bursts through the door into a bright room filled with light and announces that there are about a hundred single knights, about one thousand soldiers in the regular army, and about ten thousand cavalrymen. This is a massive war. Patrick McLean, hearing such numbers, screams in horror. What? Has Tesron gone mad? Then he begins to shake when he realizes that they will have to face not only the forces of the knights, who are like supermen for ordinary people, 
but also the cavalry. And this is in a war between fiefs and not nations. Gritting his teeth, he suddenly wonders, why go this far? A male friend fearfully adds, and also, the Quiro's house said that it would not send them help. Marion, hearing this, frightened, asks again, what? This can't be. He must have made a mistake. But the knight adds that Duane said he had addressed them several times. She immediately begins to tremble as she insists in a trembling voice, no, she must see each other in person. Patrick at this moment feels anger overwhelm him, and announces that they must gather all the men who can hold weapons. They will answer them all with their own strength. The man immediately answers, that's right. Confidant, the house of Quiros turned away from them. Once near the city, Maclean gathered as many people as he could to fight Tesran. Among them, 53 knights, 552 regular soldiers, and 44 and 18 conscripts. And that 5 on 23 people. The knight, looking forward, shakes with horror when he sees the approaching equipped and armed cavalry. At that moment, he, along with Patrick and Heinkel, came forward, mounted on horses. That's not even half of Tesron's number. Patrick McLean, seeing such a picture ahead, sighs heavily and frowns. Questions arise among the knights. Where is the first young lord? Didn't he hear? He left a long time ago and hasn't returned yet. At such a time, it cannot be. Probably shouldn't wait for him. He ran away when he heard the news. All this whisper is heard by Ronian, who turns to them angrily and asks, what are they talking about? He would never do that. Afterwards, he remembers how he watched Logan, who was holding a sword in his hand, emitting an aura, and turning to him said that he would soon teach him a secret technique. They should work together to save their family. Then Ronian McLean realizes that his brother knew that war would happen. He couldn't just run away. But the men, as if not paying any attention to his words, continue to ask each other, has the first young lord escaped? So the rumors are true. He escaped. Ronian turns to them to object again. But suddenly Patrick McLean turns to him and announces that he will have to replace his brother. He must remain determined no matter what happens. At this moment, he also wonders why he can't believe it. However, something else is important now. They must win the war. Thinking about this, Patrick raises his weapon and announces to everyone that they must get ready. They need to defeat these non-entities. Immediately, there is a warlike cry of the knights who go on the attack. Lord Tesron, seeing this, smiles widely and gloating, says, Finally, Patrick McLean took up the sword. But his knights are his swords. He must face them. The Viscount's army also rushes forward. At this moment, Patrick, decisively moving forward, activates his aura, which begins to emanate not only from the horse, but also from his weapon. At the same time, he understands that first he must break through the avant-garde. He then swings his sword with the intention of attacking first, but suddenly his blow hits the ground, and the knight in front of him holds back the attack with a shield. Patrick McLean is horrified to see this and wonders if he blocked his shot. The man, noticing his confused reaction, smiles angrily. Rick tries to catch his breath from the surging feeling of fear, and clutching the spear more tightly in his hand, looks to the side. On the right, he sees how in the distance one of the enemies pokes a spear into the throat of one of the same servants as he, and another guy, sitting on the ground and being without a whole forearm, shaking in pain, exclaims, his hand, hand. Rick, seeing such a picture, begins to mentally repeat, no. Looking to the left, he again sees the blonde man, who was knocked to the ground and pinned with his foot. The guy extended his hand to him, desperately asking, he must help him. But he looks away precisely at the moment when a posthumous sigh is heard from the blonde. Rick becomes even more terrified, and being overcome by a strong trembling, he thinks, no, 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 it's bad, don't lose. Their troops were so outnumbered that they even sent servants like him to fight. If you surround them, then this is definitely the end. But suddenly his eyes roll upward when someone hits him on the head with a spear. A knight rises above him, pointing a weapon at him and shouting for him to die. But Rick, at the very last moment, is allowed to return to the side, and the knight's spear hits the ground. Unexpectedly, the man mumbles something when he, too, is hit by the tip of a spear. One of the knights of House McLean, who came to his aid to turn on him so that he could quickly get up. He must grab the weapon. Rick extends his hand to him, thinking with relief, this is an ally, how good. With a stutter, he thanks the man, but suddenly drops of blood fly right onto his face, and his ally falls, hit by an arrow. Rick immediately gets to his feet, and running away as quickly as possible, he screams and thinks he needs to run to the rear, as far as possible from the enemy. The very height of hostilities takes place past him. Many were already mortally wounded and lying on the ground. 
He stops and clenches his teeth when he sees the advancing cavalry ahead. Rick realizes with horror that they are already here. Will they all really die? Patrick McLean also warlikely fights enemies at this time. He looks down with a frown as the knight uses all his strength to walk forward, the tribal ground under his feet. The man mockingly says that the Baron really lives up to his name. They didn't prepare so hard that he can no longer believe what's happening. But Patrick doesn't react to this, clutching his sword tighter and notes that this guy survived his blows containing power. He didn't know that Tesron also had a high-ranking knight. The other four are at least mid-rank, but is that why they are so self-confident? Afterwards he asks menacingly, so they are the ones who were preparing to deal with him. The knight, dripping from his mouth as if confirming his words, immediately asks how he should prepare them. The aura around Patrick McLean disappears, and he makes a decision, if he does not break through further, then the knightly order will not be able to do this, so he has a task. Thinking about this, he throws his cone-shaped sword to the ground and grabs the hilt of another classic sharp sword. Patrick is the first to attack and announces that he will not allow this to happen. Then he activates his aura again and hits one of the knights, causing him to sigh heavily and stagger back. The very next moment the man is scared when Patrick McLean waves a weapon right in front of his face. Suddenly he hears movement from the side. Turning his head, he sees a man holding a spear right next to him. The enemy lunges forward, but Patrick manages to lean to the side and immediately block another blow with his sword. He gets angry at the situation he finds himself in and shouts loudly, They are scoundrels. And am I familiar with knightly honor? But they just mockingly smile and ask, What is he even talking about? You shouldn't pay attention to this. These are his words before his death. One of the men adds that they are fools and should not forget that he is a trained high-ranking knight. But unexpectedly for them, Patrick McLean jumps off his horse and flies straight towards one of them. He hits the enemy with his sword, but his friend sighs heavily when it turns out that another knight attacked him from behind, piercing him with a spear. Blood drips from the tip while the gully smiles impudently and with a sharp movement takes out the weapon. Patrick groans in pain, and the blood begins to flow down his leg only more actively. And with the last of his strength, he puts his sword forward and understands that while the high-ranking knight was blocking his blows, the others attacked. It's clearly a trap, but he can't get around it. They even brought people from the rear. He feels his whole body weakening and clutches his wounded side. At the same time, he still understands that Logan did the right thing by running away. He hopes that at least his son can continue the family legacy. Lord Tesron at this time watches both of them continue, and thinks with a smile that he did the right thing in not telling anyone about his high-ranking knight. Now all that remains is to defeat Patrick McLean and capture their castle. It must be in his hands as quickly as possible. But suddenly his thoughts are interrupted by an incomprehensible noise, and he turns around and wonders, is it under cavalry? Eleven knights are approaching him on horseback and screaming in fear, Lord. They discovered a detachment of cavalry in the rear. There are about three hundred of them, Tesron repeats in bewilderment cavalry. Do the Maclean's have an elite squad? The man adds, what's unusual is that they are all without copies. Their only weapon is a small crossbow. But immediately after this phrase, Lord Tesron spits on the ground, and with a wide smile on his face asks again, with a crossbow, Is it about the ones that hunters use? They just need to send rear soldiers and archers to get rid of them. They are not an elite squad, but some kind of worthless military men. The knight obediently answers, That's right. But suddenly an arrow flies into the man's head, emitting an aura. Tesron is frightened when he sees this, and turns to the side to watch an army of cavalry coming towards them, at the head of which he sees Logan McLean. He points the crossbow in his direction, while the desire for revenge is seen in his gaze. There are many mangled corpses on the battlefield, and the grass is painted scarlet. One of the knights continues to scream from the surging pain, and beg for mercy with tears in their eyes. Logan, having examined all this, grits his teeth and furiously declares, Fire! The next moment, dozens of arrows fly towards the enemies. The knights are watching this spectacle, and one of them is confused and thinks, Does McLean have such a squad? The very next second the arrows hit many warriors, but some still pierce the cabbage soup. The man fell to the ground and looked at his defense, and realized that those who did not manage to hide behind the shields are dead. If he had delayed a little, the same thing would have happened to him. But the enemy does not surrender, and one of the crossbowmen draws the bowstring and shouts to the others to counterattack and shoot back. But when he takes aim and releases the arrow, it flies a little forward and pierces the ground. 
The man's face takes on a confused look until he realizes with horror that the arrows are not reaching them. What about their attacks then? They fly to the site again and approach straight to the knight. M the wounded and maimed again find themselves on the battlefield. Tesron, standing like Carrion, doesn't understand why the entire rear was destroyed in a second. They didn't even use magic, but stupid crossbows. What kind of weapon did Patrick create? But without despairing too much and coming up with a better plan, Lord Tesron, turning to one of the knights, orders that the cavalry from the front line should move here. They need to catch these idiots. The man immediately obeys him and answers, that's right. The coat of arms with the sign of the House of Kairos rises to the top and the knights, looking at each other, give each other a signal. Further, they whip the horses, rushing to the attack. People are moving forward with armor and a shield in hand. Tesron, pointing his hand forward, shouts there for them to finish off these people. Logan McLean, along with his army of mercenaries, stands relaxed at this time, preparing for an attack and looking forward with pleasure. I think they are moving towards them on their own. The tips of the guns collide in the air as Ronian grits his teeth and tries to defeat the enemy. But suddenly his eyes fly open as he falls to the ground from the impact. The knight turns to him and exclaims contemptuously, the guy dodges perfectly. Then another man approaches him and notes that they don't have time for him. The course of the battle has strangely changed. What? Are they really playing games here? This boy is a serious opponent. Suddenly one of the knights tells the other to turn around immediately. Having done so, the man sees behind Ronian McLean, who rises, holding a sword in his hands. The enemy is perplexed. What is he doing? At that moment he understands, having been in a real battle, he realized that he is not a genius. He is just a boy who has recently awakened. But you can't lose to him. Then he remembers the words of Patrick, who announced that he would have to replace his brother. Then he mentally exclaims that he cannot die here. But suddenly Ronian is very surprised when he sees how the knight is distracted by something and wonders why they turn their backs, and why they swing their swords. But whatever the reason, this is his chance. Realizing this, he rushes forward and extends his hand with the sword, striking the man. He falls forward without any resistance, and Ronian McLean cannot comprehend what happened. Did he just hurt him like that? Suddenly, he swallows hard as two arrows fly past him, piercing the ground. He immediately asks himself arrows. Next to him, also slowly walking backwards, a knight falls and Ronian, looking forward, cannot believe it. Is it Logan? But knights on horseback also rush past him, while their commander announces that they must attack those who have a crossbow. This is the Lord's order. Ronian McLean, looking forward, happily suggests, Is this the famous serpentine shield formation? Logan McLean also gives orders to his mercenaries. They must aim diagonally towards the ground. To the ground. When one of the guys turns in his direction in surprise, he explains that their goal is horses. The same creepy, mysterious smile immediately blooms on the mercenaries' faces, and the very next moment dozens of arrows fly through the air. The opponent's horses rear up. While the knights either fall from them or try to calm them down, it must stop. He's falling. Logan gestures with contempt at them and notes that they are fools. But then, seeing his silhouette standing alone in the middle of the field, he realizes that fortunately, he arrived in time to help Ronian. He decided to save his own family this time. There's no point in winning the fight if he dies. After rushing forward, Logan McLean shouts to Caselin that he remains in charge. But when he hears this, he is perplexed and asks again, What? But they plan to attack beyond the range of their bows. But without waiting for an answer, he wonders if victory is almost in their hands. Why doesn't the Lord try to earn it himself? He is stronger, but if he faces a mid-rank knight, something terrible could happen. Afterwards, he decisively shouts for everyone to focus on protecting Logan. Patrick McLean continues to fight with the knights at this time. He, gritting his teeth, spits blood and says, He's a real moron. The man, also smiling evilly at him, says in response, he cannot believe it. The Baron ran towards him. He knows that he will be stabbed to death. Suddenly, another man appears on the other side of him, swings his sword and tries to attack him, but Patrick manages to step aside in time. From such a sudden movement, sooner his side begins to bleed even more, he groans in pain. But then, looking up at his enemies, he mentally notes that this is strange. The knights approach him, and he realizes even more that they are all literally attacking him against his will. Why so much despair if the advantage is on their side? With the help of one of his own swords, he repels the attack of two at once. 
but this does not really help the situation, and Patrick McLean, gritting his teeth, understands that things are bad. But suddenly the knights feel that another aura appears nearby, and turning around is very surprised. Logan McLean runs straight towards them, and with a sharp swing he confuses them. Patrick also steps back and wonders what happened. But looking forward at Logan, engulfed in an aura, Patrick McLean says, it's him. He smiles in response and notes that he barely made it. Finally, when the aura dissipates a little, Patrick joyfully exclaims, son. Approaching him, he remembers with admiration, he saw how his son, along with a detachment of mercenaries, was approaching from the enemy rear, but was sure that he was far from getting here. How did he manage to make such a way through his enemies to him? After this, Patrick McLean turns around and cannot believe it when he sees a field strewn with the corpses of his enemies. He wonders in shock, are they all defeated? Then he turns to Logan McLean and tries to find the right words, when did he become so strong? No, that's not important right now. He doesn't know what's going on. Well, since he's here, does that mean the advantage is on their side? He answers confidently with a smile, of course. Then Patrick puts his hand on his shoulder and warmly says, he did a great job. At this time, another knight remains behind them, who, looking at Logan, is perplexed. Did he just knock down two middle-ranking knights at the same time? Is this pathetic 20-year-old hillbilly? At his age, he worked until exhaustion to become a knight. Okay, it doesn't matter, because now he will kill him right here. Tightly grasping the sword, the man asks the two knights lying next to him on the ground, what are Ricks and Trommel doing? They should take the potion soon. But both men groan heavily in response. Patrick McLean realizes at this moment that this attack was enough to see that even though Logan is not a high-ranking knight now, he has enough strength to cope with most mid-rank knights. It would be nice if his son dealt with those of middle rank, and he dealt with those of high rank. But unexpectedly, Logan McLean stops Patrick and decisively announces that he will fight the enemy. But he tries to stop him, no, this knight is too strong for him. He has made significant progress, but has not yet reached a high rank. Then Logan gives him a sharp, but not hard, blow to the stomach, causing Patrick McLean to sigh heavily and double over. Logan McLean, softening, explains that even he can defeat his father in this state. He should just trust him to let him fight the enemy. Having said this, he frowns seriously, and Patrick, sighing heavily, steps back and agrees, okay, but the son must be careful. He smiles and finally says, they should end it soon. The next moment, they scatter in different directions, attacking the remaining enemies. One of the knights, seeing this, is perplexed. Is this guy stepping on him and not a high-ranking knight? A male friend clenches his teeth tightly and activating the red aura shouts, how dare this idiot do this? But Logan, also jumping up and rushing forward, tightly grips the sword and soon lands, immediately swings the weapon. Studying the aura, he attacks the knight, who is trying his best not to lose. Logan McLean still does not lose his determination and throws the man back. He exclaims angrily how. At this moment he also thinks, even though he is injured, he does not feel any remarkable strength or high level from this guy. However, since he is pushing him, it means he is giving his best. The knight smiles at his thoughts and also abruptly breaks away from his place and runs forward, realizing that it cannot be otherwise. Approaching Logan, he screams for the guy to die, but he just looks at him coldly. Soon they are in the process of fighting, the fast one often moves around the field, and the man still uses his red aura, stomping his foot and swinging his sword. But suddenly he feels pain in his side and again, gritting his teeth, he understands, this cannot be, just not too early. Logan McLean, noticing his hesitation, swings his sword, causing blood to flow from the knight's mouth. Well, after all, Logan's blow lands on the ground, and during these seconds the man manages to jump back. Then he realizes that this guy never set himself up for him. You need to find the moment to attack. Suddenly he notices something and smiles, picking it up, although he has another option. Logan McLean suddenly follows his gaze and pays attention to his own sword and realizes that the power in his sword is being absorbed by the enemy's sword. Afterwards, he looks again at the knight, who, without removing the creepy smile from his face, notes, great, the guy fell for it. And then the man gets into a comfortable position, grips the hilt of the sword and goes on the attack with a roar. Logan keeps up with him, and Sakaya also tries to stab him. The knight rejoices like this. His center of gravity has shifted. Next, he moves the sword to the side and realizes this is the perfect moment. This is followed by a swing of the sword, 
but in front of the man only a brown cloth flies into the air. He turns around and is perplexed. A shred of clothes. Is this guy that fast? No, is he that slow? Logan McLean, having managed to get around him from behind in a matter of seconds, briefly says, This is the secret of the Divine Sword. Afterwards, he waves his weapon, which glows with a bright yellow light. The knight screams in fear, it can't be, he needs to get out. But Logan doesn't let him do this, and announces the first form, Cutting Wave. With these words, he swings his weapon, while the man, freezing in place, says, This is impossible. But a powerful energy wave is already heading in his direction, causing Patrick McLean and the enemies with whom he fought. Ronian also stops and looks up at the bright pillar of light shooting into the sky. But when everything passes, Logan McLean spits saliva on the ground and looks at the mark in the ground that his attack left. Afterwards he frowns when he sees the man's corpse and asks out loud, Does a high-ranking knight rely on cheap tricks? But still, raising his sword up, he loudly declares, He, Logan, killed the enemy general. The enemy troops, seeing this, begin to discuss what happened. A high-ranking knight has fallen. This can't be. Where is the Viscount? Did they even get to him? It is unknown, but the flag has not been seen for a long time. Suddenly, one of the soldiers throws a sword on the ground, and another knight immediately turns to him. What is he doing? Has he gone crazy? But the man fearfully replies that they need to surrender in order to be saved. He doesn't want to die. But the blonde still can't believe it and asks how he can do this. The rest of the knights who saw this first freeze, and then also laying down their arms, I declare that they will not surrender. They all give up. Suddenly, in the middle of the field, a desperate cry is heard from Rick, who, with tears in her eyes, announces, Long live young Lord Logan. The McLean knights also exchange glances with each other, and smilingly begin to rejoice, Long live the young lord. Long live Logan McLean. Someone is still trying to stop them, and reminds them that they are Cretina. The battle is not over yet. When cloudy night sets in, the clatter of hooves is heard on the small path. Lord Tesron, sitting on this, is perplexed. At what point did everything go wrong? He has been preparing for this fight for three years. He even requested the help of other aristocrats and gathered a hundred knights. What a red-haired idiot. His cavalry and weapons ruined everything. Then he remembers Logan and, waving the reins, realizes he needs to get home first. That way he will stay alive. Soon he actually approaches the wall of his castle and dismounts from his horse and approaches two guards. Tesron hurriedly shouts for them to open the gate. Their lord is back. The knight, seeing him, repeats in bewilderment, lord. After that he salutes, but suddenly another guard, pointing his finger forward, asks what? They must see this. Someone is coming. Lord Tesron turns around and wonders, is this cavalry? Mercenaries led by Logan McLean actually appear on the horizon, and at that moment he understands that this is the end. Having dismounted from his horse, Logan exclaims in irritation, The stupid lord can run fast. A night fog spreads across the ground, and after standing for a while, he announces that Tesron has lost. They must immediately open the gate and let the winner through. At this moment, the knights who had already lined up a protective wall for us, pulling the string of their bows, began to worry, did they lose? Is that why the lord returned in such a hurry? But they are abruptly distracted by the commander, who specifically asks if they were scared, having heard enough of the enemy's empty words. Men rush to answer, no way. The commander adds that there are just over 300 of them. They can't break their blockade. Logan McLean, listening to these words, seems to be preparing for something, and one of the gate guards is worried and asks what he is doing. But he activates his aura and abruptly disappears from their field of vision. The man at the gate wonders, has this guy disappeared? Can't be. But looking up, he sees Logan already jumping high and flying up to the wall. Then the guard announces that he is there. The commander is approaching the blade, and Logan McLean, in a voice that does not tolerate bickering, orders him to open the gate if they do not want to die. After some time, the doors of the room in the castle are open, and one of the servants is guarding the passage into a small room in which Lord Tesron is located. As he fills a bag with gold and jewelry, he is excited and thinks that he needs to take at least some gold. But suddenly a voice is heard behind him. He's caught. Turning around, Testron crawls back and asks how the guy ended up here. Logan explains that his maid showed the way even before he threatened her. This behavior says a lot about his reputation here. He grits his teeth and sees how another of his servants, guarding the entrance, looks at him for the last time and quickly leaves. This irritates him even more, and he wonders how they dared to sell it. After that, he also slowly moves back stop. 
In accordance with the convention concerning feudal wars, he only asks to spare him and his family. But Logan McLean, hearing this, mockingly asks again, in accordance with the convention. He declared war without cause and invaded them the very next day. Now he mentions the convention. Tesron still looks pitifully at him with hope, but Logan unshakably says, Does Hammond Tesron have no conscience at all? He insists, and yet says with hope, he still has the honor of an aristocrat. Enemies caught during feudal wars are guaranteed life in accordance with the convention. Logan McLean clarifies again, honor of the aristocrats, certainly. He respects the honor and traditions of McLean's own house, so he will spare his life and also give him time and permission to take the gold and leave. Hammond breathes out a sigh of relief and stutteringly thanks him. But it is at this moment that Logan adds exactly what his father would have said. After all, he is a man of honor to the core and will spare the one who surrenders without any conditions. Hammond Tesron begins to scream in fear, but suddenly Logan McLean looks away and notices the hilt of a blade decorated with precious stones in the chest of diamonds. Pulling it out of the chest, he notes that it is a beautiful blade. Hammond immediately shouts at him to take it away. It is forged by the finest craftsmen in the kingdom. But Logan, considering this, replies that he won't do it, but is grateful. Hammond Tesron had better take it. With these words, he throws him a blade, causing Hammond to ask in confusion, What? Logan McLean leans sharply towards him and plunges the tip of the dagger into his chest, from which he groans hoarsely and reminds him in a trembling voice he said that he would spare him. But Logan explains that he said that's what his father would have done. But they are not similar to him. Him and Tesron is still trying with all his might to insist, honor, honor aristocrats. Hearing this, he still laughs and asks if he should talk about honor. Does he even understand how many people died because of him? It's a shame his life will end here. Tears appear in Hammond's eyes, and her eyes begin to slowly roll back. When he is already falling dead, Logan McLean finally says that he should thank God for his quick death. Then he notices the palms of his hand, covered in blood. But with a cool, clenched fist, he says with relief that they have finally survived the disaster. It's time for him to end this. Then Logan gets up, stretches his jaw, and, getting ready, announces very loudly Hammond Tesron to commit suicide. After such an announcement, he notes that this will be enough. Suddenly, Caselin runs into the room and exclaims in concern, Lord. Logan McLean clarifies what it is. He says it seems to him that he should look into the castle's underground dungeon. Logan asks with interest to an underground dungeon. Okay. A few days later, when the setting rays of the sun illuminated the clouds floating across the sky, turning them red, he meets Patrick McLean, who, with a bandage on his head, approaches him and replies that he arrived at Tesseron Castle as soon as he left. Well, what is he saying? Haman committed suicide. Logan McLean notes indifferently he must have been desperate. Patrick still wonders if it was he who killed him. After that, he comes close to him, and Logan admits, yes, she intends to. They must take his possession back under their own control. He does not want the Tesron clan to live and create problems for them in the future. Patrick McLean looks at him carefully for a few seconds and then agrees, okay, he's already an adult. He has reasons to do so. Upon hearing this answer, Logan noted that his father had changed. But suddenly Patrick's voice is heard again, who, turning to the side, sincerely says, no matter what anyone says, his son played the most important role in this battle. Afterwards, in a whisper, he adds that he is grateful. Logan McLean looks at him with a warm grin, while Patrick McLean blushes and coughs a little at the words he just said. But after that, he still turns back to him and announces, and so, he will become the official heir of the McLean house. Then Logan seriously says, Father. Patrick listens carefully and prepares for his further phrase, and he finally answers with a sigh of relief, he's sorry, but he has to refuse. Stands Patrick McLean, having heard this, as he begins to get angry and asks again, does his son refuse the offer to become his successor? But why? Is he worried about his own reputation? If so, his contribution to the battle changed that completely. Logan McLean explains that this is not the case at all. Then Patrick clarifies what? He explains that the McLeans are a family of knights. Ronian is better suited for this position. He started using the force at 14, five years earlier than him and it is possible to predict what other feats he will perform when he becomes the same age. Patrick McLean is silent at first, pondering his words with a serious expression on his face. Afterwards, he agrees. Even though he is right, he does not become the head of the house for his military achievements. 
Logan still thinks, perhaps, based on what is known so far. But if Ronian, like in his previous life, receives the title of the youngest user of power, then no more problems will arise. And what is more important is that by becoming heirs, he will not gain any advantage. He doesn't have time to learn to be a baron. Then he turns to Patrick again and says that as an older brother, he would like to give his younger brother a chance. He hopes his father will wait until he reaches the right age. Patrick McLean, with a smile on his face, having listened to everything, lowers his head down and sincerely says that he did not expect that his eldest son was so attentive to his brother. He will accept his request and postpone the choice of heir for five years when Ronian becomes an adult. Logan McLean, relieved, says he thanks him for that. Patrick still adds, of course, he will receive another reward. How they will return home and honor their income for the war. It will probably exceed 100,000 gold. But Logan suddenly clarifies about the reward. Can he choose it on his own? Soon, one of the city's guards announces that the gates must be opened. The Knights of House McLean are back. Patrick McLean, Logan McLean, Ronian McLean, Heinkel, and the rest of the mercenaries slowly ride along the streets of the city, past the jubilant crowd on horseback. Two teenagers look up with adoration at the sight of them, and one of them clarifies they returned from the war a week later. The other boy replies, I heard it lasted one day. Then the brunette turns to him in confusion and asks, But how is this possible? Were their knights always this strong? His friend clarifies, Hasn't he heard it yet? All thanks to the first young Lord Logan. The teenager asks in surprise, Is he talking about that hooligan? But the green-eyed boy explains that, according to the returning soldiers, the young lord's mercenaries turned the tide of the battle. They walked around the enemy from the rear, as if they knew in advance what would happen. There was also a rumor that they had gifted them with a mysterious weapon. He was even able to take on a high-ranking knight single-handedly. The red-haired girl, who stood in front and heard their conversation, immediately turned to the blonde man next to her and asked, Is the first young lord such a great man? The man answered in confusion. It seemed to him that he was the only one causing trouble. Is it possible that he brought a lot of monster meat just like that? The green-eyed guy agreed. He must have come up with something. But his friend suggests that perhaps until now he was only pretending. Then the blonde sighs and notes that he gets goosebumps. But after that, they still look up with adoration and agree on the idea that this should have been expected. Geniuses are different from ordinary people. Logan McLean's house hears these exclamations of admiration, and he, grinning, still notes that he is embarrassed to hear such things. Suddenly Ronian turns to him, wondering what he will say to this. Does everyone praise him? He now asks displeasedly, is he being praised? This only makes him look worse. He shouldn't overdo it either. But Ronian McLean cheerfully asks, how could it be otherwise if this is true? But not happy to see him. He should smile, and Logan says, confused, should he smile? He sees people looking at him with delighted adoration and frowns. But then, turning to them, he begins to slowly stretch his mouth into a smile until it turns into a creepy grimace. At the same time, he also gives them a thumbs up. But people, seeing this, are horrified and begin to whisper how to understand this smile. He will rip their heads off with this finger. Hearing this, he is perplexed. Did he do something wrong? This is a failure. Behind him, Ronian notes, chuckling cheerfully as always. When Patrick McLean turns to him, Logan McLean scratches the back of his head in embarrassment, as if asking, what's the matter? He smiles and suddenly asks loudly, now they must greet the winner of this war. The crowd immediately begins to shout joyfully, long live the McLean, long live young Lord Logan. Later, when a cloudy evening sets in, he strolls through the castle courtyard. At the same time, he asks out loud, will the welcoming ceremony last until the morning? For people who have just returned from war, they have good stamina. But suddenly he hears someone sternly asking what he was up to. Turning around, Logan McLean sees Marion Quiroz, who is holding Ronian's hand and excitedly asks, Mom. But she suddenly frowns and says, She heard everything. Did he refuse to become heir? What's his plan? He can fool others, but not her. Ronian McLean repeats, Mom. Afterwards, he turns to Logan and asks to forgive her. She was very affected by the problem with her family. But he smiles and tells him that everything is fine. Coming closer, he mentally notes that she was always not happy with him, but after the betrayal of the Cairo's house, she lost all her power, so he has no need to fear her anymore. If he apologizes now, then she can accept it. Take a deep breath. He really turns to her. 
he realizes that his actions in the last month did not deserve his mother's trust, and he regrets that he was controlled by envy and a feeling of inferiority. As soon as Marion hears this, she immediately turns to Ronian and notes that he sees that Logan has confessed, but he immediately pulls her elbow again and asks her to stop. Turning to Logan McLean, he also adds that she is not in a good mood right now. But Logan insists he just has to listen to him. After all, he is the person to whom he should apologize. Ronian hearing this, confused, asks again, what? He explains that he apologized to him after returning, but never stated why. It seems that, unfortunately, I and the cowardly nature that he cultivated for several years are difficult to overcome. Ronian McLean still can't figure out what he's talking about, but he just continues, he knows about it. He's sorry for hating him all these years. Ronian freezes in surprise, and then swallows hard when I hear such words. Margin Kairos is also surprised by such words, but Logan continues, he tried to cover up his own incompetence with hatred. And now he sincerely regrets his behavior. Therefore, his brother should allow him to at least now formally apologize to him. He's really sorry. Ronian McLean, looking up at him with a sad look, remains silent, and therefore Logan McLean, clenching his fists with sadness, understands that good deeds cannot cover up bad ones. He's still naive. But suddenly Ronian's voice is heard, everything is fine. Logan is very surprised when he hears this and frowns at him. He finally smiles and adds that he believed that as long as he was good to his older brother, one day the one he knew would return. He finishes these words with a warm smile and an embarrassed blush. Logan McLean also smiled and realized that he shouldn't have dared to do this earlier. Afterwards, he turns to Marion and also says that he sincerely cares about Ronian and hopes that he will become the heir. He knows he can't ask her to trust him right away, so he would be grateful if she would just watch everything he does from now on. Hearing such words, she tilts her head in surprise and thinks deeply. Logan, looking at Marion Kairos, understands that this will be enough for now. At this time, a round luminous moon appears from behind the night clouds, and the next day turns out to be warm and sunny. Logan McLean is walking along a forest path with Hammer, and he wonders where the Lord was going immediately after returning from the war. He replies that Hammer has rested enough, it's time for him to get to work. But he replies with irritation that he's just worried, that's all. At the same time, he thinks about it, he is worried that the Lord will squeeze all the juice out of him again. Logan, smiling slyly, replies not to worry, he will definitely enjoy this task. Then Hammer sighed heavily and wondered if this guy knew what he liked. But soon, Logan McLean stops and, raising his head up to a high mountain covered with rare greenery, announces commas from now on they will develop this mine. Earlier, during a conversation on the wall of the Tesseron castle, Patrick McLean asked in surprise, as a reward, his son wants to receive the right to develop mines? Does he mean on the mountain, near the Tesseron borders? Logan confirms, yes, exactly. Patrick cannot understand and therefore wonders, even though it is a mountain, but in reality there is nothing there. Why did he choose this? He smiles and suggests, who knows? What if buried gold is discovered in this? The reason why the House of Thesron began the War of the Fiefs became clear only a year after its end. Tesron mined gold from a mountain in the captured McLean territory, and that alone made him far more powerful than your average duke, until Ronian McLean destroyed his family for revenge. Footsteps are heard on the cold stone floor, and Caselin returns and explains that here is the underground prison of Tesron Castle. This turned out to be unusual people, so he decided that the Lord should take a look at it himself. An old man with a thick mustache falls against the metal bars of a metal cell and desperately screams, they didn't do anything wrong, and not just extracting gold from the mine, for which they were hired, and that evil Viscount locked them here. Behind the old man, there are still the same desperate and pitiful people. Logan, putting his palm to his face, says in disgust, Oh, this Tesron. He can't believe that this freak put five valuable mining experts in jail. The man seeing this asks again in confusion, Is the guy angry? But Logan McLean, licking his lips at this moment, realizes that this is such an unexpected catch. The old man, noticing his gaze, is perplexed. What's the matter? They won the war against Tesron, but it was like riding a small wave. If the invasion of the Empire, which led to the collapse of the country, is the last obstacle, then the event that will occur a year later will be the beginning of the destruction of the nation. Death of the current king, Samuel von Grandia. His sudden death will lead to a conflict between the three princes for the crown, followed by three years of civil war, 
which will significantly weaken the fighting power of the kingdom. Empire Tuesday just at the moment when the strength of the kingdom has not yet been restored. In general, this was the first reason that led to the collapse of the kingdom. House McLean is not a member of the faction, maintaining a priority that would allow them to remain simple observers. However, he cannot miss such a chance. He will take advantage of the chaos to reclaim the lands that previously belonged to them, and then they will once again become rulers of the Southwest. But then Logan thinks even deeper, and if he succeeds, he will stop the civil war and move forward. Suddenly, he is brought out of his thoughts by the address harem. What was the Lord thinking about in broad daylight? All this time, standing next to them were the same five workers from the mine who were in prison. Logan McLean turns to them and suddenly realizes that he hadn't even noticed. He needs to get his act together. He had just overcome the catastrophe. For the sake of the future, he needs to quickly increase his combat power, but now this proposal will sound like nonsense. He will have to rely only on his own money. Raising his head up, he also notes that this mountain will become a cash cow to sponsor his endeavors. He then announces to everyone else that there is gold in the middle of the mountain. He wants them to mine it. How much will it cost him approximately? Harem, along with the other men, freezes in surprise, but still thinks skeptically, this is another ridiculous task. The old man also thinks that Tesron promised to pay a lot, so he immediately agreed, but is this guy really telling the truth? After that, he modestly raises his hand and clarifies, Is the Lord sure that there is gold there? He nods his head and confirms this, he is sure. But then the man wonders how the Lord knew about this. Logan begins to get nervous from such questions and shouts that he saw everything with his own eyes. The old man, hearing such an answer, thinks in shock, did he see this? So how? Logan adds that for their information, this mission is secret, so they will work as six people. The man once again asks the question, does he want to kill them? Afterwards, he exclaims, how can only six people work in the mine? This is exorbitant work, even with a no. After that, he looks down and mentally orders him with a frown. He must support him. Harem, looking back, looks away and thoughtfully says, they can simply prepare for death in advance. They must sleep less and give up normal human life. As soon as the old man hears this, he realizes with horror that he is finished. Logan McLean, watching them, thinks contentedly, Hammer is great. He already thinks like a slave, or rather, like a worker. Afterwards, he still asks, aren't you ready to start? And he would like to hear what about payment. The man at first doesn't know what to answer, but then explains that first he needs to get to the gold in order to determine the scale of the work. But five million gold pieces will do as a down payment. Harem also adds that it will take a long time to develop the mine safely. Preparation alone will take six months, then the same amount of time to work at full capacity. Logan frowns upon hearing this and realizes he knew it would take a lot of money and time, but this gold made the Viscount richer than other dukes. He needs to get it at any cost. If only he could sell monster meat now, he would invest the proceeds in the mine. However, the effect of this will become known only after six months. Wait, does he really need to wait for this? If he takes a toxin from meat, he can now also use it as medicine. For this, he resorted to the help of a neutralizing agent when he was a mercenary. He can do the same now. He should do everything himself and sell this meat. A week later, in the McCallion house in the south, Rick's tired voice rang out, ready. This is a cloudy medicine made from night grass, herbs from the site, and licky herbs. With these words, standing near barrels of various sizes, he wipes his forehead and removes the bandage from his face. But Logan McLean, who approached him, notes that he asked not to call it muddy. It is a neutralizing agent. Where is the monster meat? He replies that it is in the vault, as the Lord asked. Then Logan announces, great, they'll go there now. They need to use a prepared remedy on it. Rick, hearing this, asks again in horror. What? The young Lord wants him to go there with him. Logan McLean confidently answers, of course, but then he closes his eyes and pretends that he doesn't hear him, shouts loudly that no, he doesn't want to do this, the Lord has never been there, so he doesn't know anything. Logan, observing this behavior, is confused and thinks, why is this fool suddenly fussing like that? But unexpectedly, a disgusting smell also reaches him, and covering his nose with his palm, he groans and wonders what this stench is. While Rick is vomiting nearby, Logan McLean still understands. He knew that he would smell, but this smell is already making him nauseous. Then he activates his aura, which penetrates his nose, and then he sighs with relief. Logan finally announces that they should finally go. Rick, seeing this, shouted in confusion, 
It can't be. Why is he feeling bad? But not the Lord. He replies that he has paralyzed his sense of smell. Rick annoyedly shouts at him that he is selfish. But Logan McLean only advises him to awaken the Force if he feels so bad. Then he hands him white powder and asks him to sprinkle it on the meat. He should not regret it. Let it all be in this powder. The black spots are poisonous. You have to be careful. Rick, doing everything as he said, with a scarf tied over his face, quietly says this smell. Logan continues to command him, after which he must make minced meat and roll it into a ball. Having shown one such ball, he asks, Well, does it look like medicine? Rick notes, frowning, probably. Then Logan McLean announces, Okay, this is what they will be selling. He will create, so he must remember how to do it. But as soon as Rick hears this, he immediately shouts in protest, What? No, never. Logan suddenly adds that he will pay 100 gold coins for each pill. Then he finally sighs and answers, let's say. Logan McLean realizes at this moment that he actually expected to do without costs. But after tightening the pills for him, he announces that the effectiveness of this medicine now needs to be tested. I'm wondering, what is this for? Logan replies that it's for men's health. Rick, still frowning again, asks, how is this to be understood? He exclaims irritably, he shouldn't disappoint him. He explains only once, so the servant must listen carefully. The girl rabbit notices how the boy rabbit very slowly stirs something in a plate with a mortar and approaches him and touches him on the shoulder. Then the girl rabbit shows the boy rabbit the pill and he eats it. The next moment it begins to work the mortar more actively, gradually picking up speed and increasing in size. Rick, having listened to all this, suddenly exclaims and Logan coughed into his fist. Did he really understand? He adds, chuckling, yes, everything is clear to him but there is one person on whom you can try it. Logan McLean asks in surprise who it is. Rick raises one finger in the air and announces Dwayne. At that moment, walking along the corridor of the palace, he wonders why his ears are burning. Walking up to the door and knocking on it, he announces to the young lord that Dwayne Filsner has arrived. Logan's voice is heard from the room, he can enter. Opening the door slightly and going inside, he apologizes he's sorry, but they told him that the young lord wanted him, Walking deeper into the room, Dwayne, looking back, adds, the first young lord. Suddenly, Logan McLean appears right behind him and whispers in his ear that he has been waiting for him. Dwayne Filsner got very scared and jumped to another door and shouted, You can't jump out from behind so quickly. Logan, walking up to him and putting his hand on his shoulder, explains that he just wanted to give him a shoulder massage. He's been very tired these last few days. Apparently he has to settle things after the war, right? Dwayne, very embarrassed and trembling, stutters and answers, What? No, it's okay. In contrast, things are going worse for the Lord. Logan McLean notes out loud, but he fell from powerlessness. Dwayne Filsner explains, No, the Lord just scared him. But he lightly slapped him on the back, already angry, and insists, It can't be. He knows how difficult it is for him. Things are going badly for them, because Dwayne spent every last coin on the war. Syllables and knights do not know about this and ask for payment. Management is going through difficult times right now. Tears appear in Dwayne Filsner's eyes. He again reddens his excuse. He is sorry. All this time he seems to have misunderstood the young lord. He didn't expect that he would be so caring to even think about the manager. Logan, wanting to quickly move on to the necessary matter, directly asks, Is that why he has problems with the opposite sex? As soon as Dwayne hears this, he first freezes, and then, quickly walking towards the exit of the room, he changes, he is very sorry. Logan McLean, frowning, shouts after him to stop and at least listen. He wanted to offer him help. With these words, he extends his palm forward, on which the pill lies, and Dwayne Filsner turns around and, a little scared, asks, what is this? Logan explains that it is a patented product from a merchant from Kale. The result is guaranteed after the first pill. At the same time, he also mentally adds, he has never tried this personally. But then, Dwayne turns again and insists, what is he thinking? He decided to give it to him first, but in response, he only embarrassedly lowers his eyes to the floor. After some time, someone quickly runs along the palace corridor, making heavy steps, and addresses Logan McLean, the young lord. Rick, who at that time was walking with him, but in the other direction, says in confusion, is this manager Dwayne? Logan understands with pleasure, finally. But he immediately turns to Dwayne Filsner, who ran up to them and hurries to scold him. This is the manager. Is it possible to run along the corridor? But Dewey, not paying attention to him, 
immediately turns to Logan and hastily says, How much? How much do the pills cost? Logan McLean, hearing such a question, understands that this is success. Rick also turns to him and clarifies, Do they hear him? But Logan, really not paying attention to him, asks Dwayne to give him his hand. He continues to breathe heavily, sits down on one knee, and swallows heavily. At the sight of such a picture, Rick exclaims in confusion, Manager. But for some period, there is a pause between them, while Logan McLean, in the eyes of Dwayne Filsner, looks like the main character, and Rick, not understanding the situation, also watches him. Suddenly, Logan hands Dwayne a wooden box, and he accepts it like the greatest gift. After the first successful time, the men bowed their heads in front of Logan McLean, and the experiments continued. One day, while sitting at the table with a serious voice in his voice, he turned to Heinkel standing in front of him. He heard rumors that he and his wife had been having a lot of quarrels in recent days. Is that true? He asks in confusion, what? Then spread such rumors. But Logan immediately closes his second test subject's mouth and announces, I'm satisfied. He just has to try to accept it. As soon as Heinkel swallows the medicine, he suddenly feels a flame inside and, turning around, tries to somehow hint to him about leaving the young lord. But Logan McLean, understanding everything, asks him to go to his wife. He will talk to his father. Heinkel breathes a sigh of relief, thanks him and exclaims, he asks the decision to bow out. After that, he leaves and Logan's third test subject turns out to be Patrick. He, standing facing the window after taking medication, shyly turns to him and notes that it was wonderful. Leaving his office, Logan McLean mentally turns to Ronian and apologizes. He is sorry, but they will have another brother. Suddenly Rick notices him and immediately shouts, Stop! Why doesn't the young lord offer it to him? Logan turns around and looks at him, and after looking him up and down, he leaves. Rick was very embarrassed by this and even felt ashamed, wondering what kind of look that was. Suddenly, Logan McLean stops and explains in a whisper that he has no one to try the effect of the pill with. Then Rick begins to get angry and angrily answers him. The young lord said everything. Young lord. But Logan just asks him not to follow him. He stinks. After some time has passed, a voice comes from the purple glass ball. It's clear. If the medicine works, then there will be demand. What price does he want to set? Logan McLean, sitting across from him at the table, answers decisively, 100 gold coins apiece. 1,000 coins for a set of 10 pieces. But Philip Cloud, having heard such an answer, frowningly answers, he doesn't think that the aristocrats in the capital are fools. He confirms this with a smile, of course not. He's just confident in his own product. At the same time, Logan remembers that in a past life, it was bought so often that the price increased terribly. At the same time, on the other side, Philip hands the magician a gold coin and in a whisper asks him to let him talk for another ten minutes. The guy thanks him with a smile and leaves. At this time, Logan McLean continues to convince him that if Philip Cloud sells this medicine in limited quantities, he will be able to earn more money. He still answers in agreement, this is logical if the Lord is confident in the effect. Then Logan insists even more, he is convinced that the result will be excellent. It is enough for someone famous to try the pill and express their own opinion. It must be someone who needs such a medicine. Philip crosses his arms and sighs again and again wonders which aristocrat would spread the word that he has problems in his love affairs. He explains that there is no need to dwell on this. The conversations of aristocrats are always overheard by many ears. Even if it's a secret, rumors will still spread and other buyers will flock like bees to honey. Finally, Philip Cloud takes this seriously and answers thoughtfully, in which case, maybe he'll go to the banquet in the capital. Logan McLean answers irritably, gritting his teeth, banquet? Is he serious? At the same time, he thinks that he only went to celebrate victories when he was a mercenary. Philip explains that it is easiest to make connections there. Although it will take some time to promote your own business. After all, you won't be able to sell medicine at a banquet. But suddenly Logan clings only to the last phrase and suddenly asks again, Should I sell at the banquet? Philip Cloud immediately asks him not to say that he wants to do this. His house would become an outcast if he did something like that in high society. But he adds that this will not happen if he is not the one doing the selling. Suddenly, Logan McLean gets an idea and notes whether Philip remembers what he told him about the informant in the capital. He must go to that person and find out everything they may need. He heard this divided and asks what? Informant? What is the Lord up to? But Logan only slyly replies that he will soon arrive at Grand. He will know the details when they meet. 
Philip Cloud purses his lips and makes a mental note. He has a bad feeling. A week later, Logan McLean dismounts his horse and announces they have arrived. In the capital of the kingdom of Grandia, Grand, Philip looked at him in surprise and also repeated that he had really arrived. But how did he manage to get permission? He means to sell this medicine. He turns to him over his shoulder and explains, of course, he didn't talk about it. Although bringing 3,000 boxes without a servant was not easy. At the same time, he remembers that his father agreed faster than he had hoped. This is probably due to his success in the war. Then Philip Cloud adds, by the way, when the Lord came for the first time, there were no servants with him either. Does he think it's normal for the son of a noble house to move around like that? But Logan tries to explain that when the servants are around, it is difficult for him to choose a route. Not to mention that they have other jobs besides this. Suddenly he remembers, by the way, about work. He loaded Rick with a big task. Then he begins to remember more and more how he returned to him and joyfully exclaimed, Young Lord. Logan McLean understands that both in the past and in this life, he did everything for his sake. He also remembers how Rick would always ask him with a smile, can he return to his own responsibilities? What? The young lord wants him to work and have a day off. One day he also asked if the servant said that he had been smelling bad lately. They don't even come close to the point of ever being able to get married. Logan finally realizes that he really is very grateful to him. Further, he has flashbacks to the moment when Rick, filling his pants pockets with medicine, clarified what? The young lord says he's a little short on pills. This can't be. What do you mean he will beat him for every pill that falls out when he shakes me? As a result, Logan McLean sincerely turns to Rick in his thoughts. He is very grateful to him. Then, frowning, he announces, so everything has been decided. Philip, looking at him, understands that this is a familiar expression on his face. Logan, without noticing his reaction, continues, a sign of gratitude to Rick for doing such a job. He will call the medicine emporic. Periclod, hearing this, sadly understands, there is no doubt, he is a madman. 